Okay. Uh, Band of Blades, session eight. Uh, Commander, do you want to go through the, just for reference, the three missions on offer? Okay. So we have Grasping Peak, House Bessemer, a secret and disreputable noble family from Westlake, has approached us discreetly. They have some business arrangement with a clan of mountain bandits, which seems to have run into complications. Wendelin Bessemer, assigned by the family to manage the bandits, has not reported back in some time. House Bessemer believes their operation to have become compromised, but there could still be some intelligence to salvage from it. They've bid us to retrieve Wendelin Bessemer, or in the event of his death, his effects, including his logbooks. And this is a recon mission, exfiltration. The reward for successfully completing it is plus two intel. The penalty for failing it is nada. That this... is a key, that's a key point to that mission. Though. Yeah. <laughs> that is a key part of information. The second is Broken Arrow. The undead have attacked a caravan in the plains. Survivors who made it to the refugee camp outside Westlake spoke of many horrific fates, but also of the uncharacteristic behaviour of the undead in this raid. They were as intent on killing people as they were in claiming the caravan's goods. The supplies will be taken away to an unknown location. If we can track down the raiders and claim the caravan's goods for our own, we would be all set for bargaining with the nobles of Westlake for necessary assets. This is a supply mission, rescue the supplies. The reward is plus three supply, and the penalty for failing is minus one morale. The third and final potential mission is Crimson Fire. We've received an offer from Lady Von Mayer, a prominent Westlake noble. One of her holdings, the Stone Orchard Mansion, has apparently been infiltrated and subsequently taken over by the undead. Lady Von Mayer's steward, having made his escape, told a tale of blackened walking corpses in the night, as well as staff and peasants acting as though they were possessed. She requires that Stone Orchard be purged of the undead and living both. To be certain the foulness ends, no mercy is to be given. Burn the bodies. This is a supply mission, mercenary work. The You get glory favour for it. Two thumbs fresh. Yeah, which we like. Yeah, we like that we're thing. all about that glory. Useful. The reward for successfully completing it is plus two supply and plus one religious supplies. The penalty for failing it is minus one morale. So, all, all joking aside about me just sort of deciding which one we were going to take, what what do my um, stout marshal and quartermaster think? I mean, well, I, I'm going to say right now, I think Grasping Peaks, the one to automatically fail, because there's no cost. I, I agree. I agree. As as I said, outside of this game's uh, session, um, when we first looked at the missions, I believe Crimson Fire is the one we should focus our attention on, because we get we get the supply, which the other one will give us anyway. We also get the favour, which enables us to complete one of our original goals, which is level up the Chosen. Indeed. Uh, and we also get religious surprise, which is a nice little added bonus. The quartermaster will appreciate mm -hmm. all these new toys. <laughs> I mean, in the un in the unlikely yeah. event, and I don't mean I don't mean to sound p pessimistic, my, my good comrade in arms, but in the unlikely event we succeed at both missions, the one we roll and yeah, the one yeah. we choose to undertake, we could be like rolling in them supplies by the end of this mission. Mm -hmm. However, if we f if if things go badly. That morale is going to take a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, yeah. You, as you were saying, Marshall, now, we can't we really the afford real, it. The real danger is my engagement rolls. So if we can, if we can somehow soften that edge, <laughs> then we may stand a chance. I can give you black shot, but I'd rather not give you the last horse. Okay, well, <laughs> we can keep the horses. Well, I was going to say, presumably black. Sh if if we could choose to go for crimson fire, which is like. We've got to stay there until we've like cleared out the place. Yeah, Presumably, a... that's the time for black shot. Mm -hmm. Living and dead, so it's yeah. that's going to be quite a entrenched mission, I think as well. Yeah, so that, we that, that that's going to be that's going to be a full on sort of meat grinder, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to have to be careful that we don't um, grind ourselves down in the process. Indeed, but I do believe, uh, Commander, for the first time, you have intel. 
So this can certainly change things a little bit. You are True. entirely correct, Marshall. So Let I me believe consult currently my sheet. you get a question from every category, like one from each, because you have three. Indeed. I'm going to consult my commander's logbook to have a look at the... Uh, Does he spend every time he uses... He, he, no, like, he, he, he spends has... nothing. This is just what he has. Oh. Yeah. He could sit on three and ask me four questions every time from now. But he could also spend those for extra dice on missions. The engagement so. roll. Yeah, that, that, that's why we've used them before, to like bump up the engagement roll. Yeah. So potentially I can do... Obviously, we can ask the questions now, yeah. and then when you make your engagement roll later, you burn off a bit of that intel to make yeah. sure we get that sweet, sweet which, supply. Which I think you probably want to do, because there's a thing here that will take you down to zero dice, I think. But we'll get to that. There's, there's a com um, right, the, okay. the intel is your, is your area of expertise, Commander. Well, we'll um, we'll see how we go with the... Uh, I presume we're all agreed we're going to go on the Crimson Fire mission. The, the if, he, if he says, though, that like the, the biggest threat on Crimson Fire is like a level 5 threat, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to yeah, laugh. This is all you can reconsider, because you, you have yeah, the yeah. intel questions to ask. So. Yeah. We're okay. looking at Crimson Fire, uh, and I presume bro Broken Arrow. I'd be like, guys. Yeah. At, at the moment, ahead. we're looking at playing out Crimson Fire and then making a roll mm. for Broken Arrow. Yeah. Okay, let's get the questions. Okay, so obviously what's the highest threat we're going to face on these missions uh two it's not too bad could be worse so what we know from that is there's no infamous or lieutenants yeah. in in these missions okay that's good that's what i like to hear however it doesn't tell us how many threat to creatures there are yeah it could be six thousand yeah yeah okay so for my next question boom 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 What's a challenge we might face on this mission? Uh, which one? Um, Crimson Fire. Um, from what the steward was telling, uh, you know that it's it's going to be the Breakers minions at the okay. at the Stone Orchard Mansion because they talked about the blackened bodies. You know where those come from. They come from the Breakers Corpse Glades, which manufacture these like scorched. Uh, bodies awesome. so what that all means is it is likely going to involve uh some mystic arts there was talk of possession mm, probably uh dark evil magics uh going on uh so and that is uh rather unpredictable uh so uh, but you know this you know because the breaker at least in some form, is present uh, via her minions. Mm. There might be some things that you absolutely cannot prepare for because that's what the breaker is. Yeah. Uh, this she is going to be is... the shining episode. Mm. Some... Okay, so for my next question, what's the main weakness of the undead's position on Crimson Fire? Hmm... Well, for one, they're in in a set space. They're they're in a set area, so they're inside the mansion. Uh, it, well, there's uh, some outside as well, presumably, but uh, guards and stuff. But they are actually inside a a building to a large degree, uh, from uh, your understanding. So. What what I'm hearing is prepare the demolition charges. I, 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 you can do whatever you like. <laughs> they, they, there, was, they there, are... was, there was nothing from the noble in the mission brief about the house had to be standing when we came out. <laughs> so, yeah, they are sort of not very mobile, I think, is probably one of their biggest, um, biggest things here. Okay. So before I ask my final question, I'm going to throw a suggestion open to the marshal and the quartermaster as to how we proceed with this mission. It's just a suggestion, because obviously you guys are like my main people. What I'm going to suggest is, in a similar way to when we were taking out the um, the crow, the doctor, you know, where we basically like blew up the building with him in it, and when he came romping out with his undead, we like laid down the fire on them. I'm going to suggest we do like a, a slightly modified version of that plan, and we do a bit more infiltrating at the start, locate the structural weak points of the building. 
set the demolition charges so it'll hopefully collapse most of the building, like burying and hopefully killing a lot of the undead, then it's only the survivors, and certainly probably the living people, then it's only the, the ones who survive who manage to dig themselves out that we actually have to deal with. Because if we just go romping in, there could be loads of undead. And obviously we're only going to have limited manpower that we can spare for this one mission. But that that's just my suggestion. I don't know how you two feel about that. I'm loath to take down any living people, to be honest. But I, th I think if we're um, if most of them are possessed by evil magics, we're probably doing them a favour in the long run. Yeah. G given the corrupting nature, that's however that's a good point, uh, quartermaster. If there's possession and stuff going on, we, if we've got any like real inquiries or anything like that to prove us against corruption, now might be the time to like bust out the religious stuff. But I can see you shaking your head, so I'm guessing we're a bit tapped in that department. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, right. So, obviously, think about that one. I, I'm going to ask my final question. Okay. Da, 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 da. I don't really see any of these final questions I want to ask, to be honest. What are the options? What What is the weakness of a lieutenant we've encountered previously? We know there's no lieutenants there. What is the craving or instinct of a lieutenant? There's none of them there. What is a specific broken researching? Well, can you save your last question and ask it about the other mission? Well, I was going to. I was going to. I was going to actually ask. Because where it says if you hold three or more, ask one of the following. Could I use that to ask one of the questions from the lower lists? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Well, let's let's say that you can, because it makes sense to me anyway. Okay, what I'm going to suggest finding out, guys, and obviously shout if you don't think this is a useful use of it. I'm going to suggest asking what will be a useful item to bring on this mission. Mm-hmm. Or, or um, before I ask this, I'm just throwing out suggestions to, to my to my main guys. I could also ask what resources or benefits might we find at the location. Ooh. Or I could ask what challenges or problems are inherent in a specific location. All good questions. All yeah. good questions. Especially like the last two. Yeah. So Go for the last one. What do you say, Marshall? What was the last question again? What challenges last... or problems are inherent in a specific location? So yeah, we can ask about if, stone. If, if you want uh, help from the voice in the void, um, <laughs> uh, that that one, let me check your sheet there, uh, Commander. Uh, so which bracket is this? It's in the, um, the third bracket, I think. Or mm. the sort of third one down, where it's like, what specific problems are there at a location? Challenges, but okay. Uh, um, we haven't done this a lot, so I'm just pointing this out because I think there's definitely a chance uh, on pretty much all of these missions, I guess, and all missions going forward as well. What resources or benefits might we find at a specific location ahead? Uh, that's also a thing. If you want to ask about any point between where you are and then uh, Skydagger Key, yeah, yeah. basically, uh, you can you can ask about those. And also, oh, uh, with, with your with your top level, the three one, uh, there's the what special missions are ahead. If you if you want to get into that business. Um, yeah, I, I can see the benefits of those. I'd rather, I think, I'd rather find yeah. out like what what's the the, the weaknesses and whatever of um, yeah. Stone Orchard Mansion. Yeah, sure. So, what challenges or problems are in here? That's the one, right? Yeah. So, no wait, am I looking at the wrong thing? Mm. So it's in the two or more intel yeah. bracket. And it's the what challenges or problems are inherent in a specific location ahead. Yeah. I think that might refer to the locations on the map. All right. Okay. Fair enough. 
Yeah, yeah, because it says location and not mission. That's the only reason why uh, I think I think it works like that. In which case, um, I'm going to ask what will be useful to bring on this mission. Hmm. Uh, well, I presume we're talking about Crimson Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of ammo and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, reliquaries, you already knew about that, so you figured it out. Um, probably demolition tools, but maybe not for the reason that you figured out before. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, demolition tools. You probably thought about that already because you had your plan there. We're but... going to find something on the ground that. Indeed. Bring the boomsticks. Okay. Yeah, there may there might be some stuff there that you want to I I affect <laughs> in a drastic way. <laughs> I'm also gonna say, um, obviously, this is your wheelhouse, Marshall, rather than mine. But if we've got any either rookies that are near leveling up to actual soldiers, or if we haven't, just it might be worth bringing a rookie along to try and get a few more people leveled up. Can it's I true. suggest that the Marshal consider is sending mostly Panyar on this mission on the grounds that they generally have the natural resilience to corruption and it might be very helpful right now. It's a good call, Quartermaster. That is a good suggestion. Thank you very much. Yeah, so so th those are the missions decided. So I'm going to turn over to our uh, faithful Marshal. Uh. <laughs> Yes, I've been looking through what the roster we have available at the moment. Mm. I have to consider that we have multiple missions to field. Of men course. Too. Um, this is going to be quite a, a meat grindy mission. Well, first of all, what specialists do we have to send on this mission? Uh, assault, uh, sorry, heavy officer and scouts are the main... Uh, for rare uh, for this type of mission for a supply mission. Yeah, for both. Yeah. Because these are both supply yeah. missions. So I have to send at least a combination of those. D do we have to send all of those or can we just send like one of those? Oh, or? Just one. one per mission. Okay. So I need, I need two of them. So I'm thinking of sending the officer on the other mission. Okay, yeah. Um, so... are, are, we, are we sending out the Kingfisher Knight on Crimson Fire or? I believe that is probably going to be the yeah the tech point. Uh, I'm gonna just try to think. Uh, I'm gonna need some explosive. That there was the um. That was the the dude I was I played in the previous game who yep. leveled up I, into I the explosives. He's, he, he's the um. I believe he was Panyar as well, wasn't he? He is a Panyar. I'm thinking of bringing him, but I was considering your rookie suggestion. Well, could could we could we not? Cliff as well. I say, could we not take either the Kingfisher and Grey Standing Cliff, take one of them, then take a rookie, and then take the soldier as the explosives expert? We could, yeah. Certainly. I mean, I'm just throwing ideas out. You're the you're the sort of military drafts person, so your decision yeah. stands. I will support yes. whatever decision you make. Marshal Barbosa, <laughs> no breaker. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So make any decision so, you like as long as we win. I'm putting the Kingfisher in charge. He's the strongest we've got for, for, to to take this on. John, you can take up the Kingfisher, being your fondness for Zimyati. Hannah, I'm going to give you a soldier mm -hmm. uh, from the Star Vipers, a Vermilion Stargazing Scythe, who is the explosives expert. Okay. I, I shall take the rookie because I'll be the Jedi. Which one? What's the rookie's there? name? Uh, which one? Am I gonna take? You know what? I'm gonna take. <laughs> well, they're all the same. They're all all right. <laughs> you don't got any Panyar rookies? Not from this squad, no. From this one, 
gonna take Vice Vice Count Leon Alfonsi. Okay. Okay. I will make him up. He's all right. Uh... Okay. This soldier. Yep. Has on his equipment list from his previous adventure a reliquary which he hasn't used does he keep yep. that or not uh, he doesn't I didn't Every, think he goes... would but it was worth yep. asking yeah it's worth asking oh I forgot I bought the kingfish out of that war machine mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> reduce your threat level sucker strong this is rapidly becoming the Kingfisher versus the he, Cinder he, King. He, he is the MVP, I think we have so far. So we've got to take care of him. I, I imagine when we, if we make it to um, the fortress and we have like a final fight, it's going to pretty much end with like the Kingfisher like ripping his jacket open like Hulk Hogan style, like standing on the battlements. <laughs> What you gonna do, brother? That's it. When the Kingfisher comes for you, in an hour he's gonna give it some like Dwayne Johnson flavor. Can you smell what the Kingfisher's got cooking? <laughs> you smell it? That's fish, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's mackerel, sucker? <laughs> yep. Then just clotheslining the <laughs> <laughs> the broken. <laughs> So like people's elbow and off the bottom. <laughs> yeah, just like climb to the top. Roar! Down he Give goes. Give him the chair, the chair. <laughs> okay, right, I've got Kingfisher Night up. Okay, so there's there's not much point in me taking. What are we what are we thinking about loads for the people, guys? I'm probably gonna suggest a heavy if we're going in a clear out mission. But if we want to get in quietly and and like rig the building to blow, then we might want to go quietly. So. Well, I'm, I'm definitely gonna suggest that as the Kingfisher Knight, I take heavy because it gets me all the armor and the shields and whatnot. Is this mission gonna take multiple days, by the way, or is this just an in and out? I don't know how long you plan to take. It's not a long distance. I, I to don't travel. plan for it to take a long time. I plan for us to blow up that building, collapse on everyone inside, lace the place with black powder, and then leave with a cool explosion going <laughs> off behind us. <laughs> but I was going to suggest as well, because we haven't got any automatic relinquiries we can take, if we've got the option to, it might be an idea to take some. It's like I can I can spunk both of my um, two low to just yeah. be like relinquish as the kingfisher knight. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say that might be a good idea yeah. because that's you, your uh, intel yeah, says we, we, the we breaker. Know, we know that is corruption, going to be there. sorcery vibes coming down. Yeah, and this time yeah. it might not be a zombie clawing at your face. It might just happen to you. Yeah, right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go heavy with the uh, with the kingfisher. Okay, uh, Zaya Ivanova is going to give everyone on the team some black I thought you're, I thought you're playing Vermilion. I am. It I'm also says, the quartermaster. quartermaster. Oh, quartermaster. My, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, we're breaking up the, the good stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's some black shot. Use it wisely. Okay, everyone takes black shot. Yeah. Okay. I cannot carry any supplies. Nor can I if I take relinquiries. Mm hmm. I'm going to say, and I'm torn between relinquiry and ammunition. I think I'm going to skip off the reliquary and take more shooty stuff. Yeah. I mean, the only reason I've not gone for more supplies is because I don't have a gun apart from a flare gun for some reason. I can only imagine that, like the kingfish and all that, secretly Have loves any fireworks. Any of us taken supplies as yet? Nope. No. Um, That's what I was asking. Is it going to be like an in and out? Or we also need someone to take a wrecking kit. Uh, I think I thought I got one. No, I can't take a wrecking. Can I take a wrecking kit? 
Yeah, fine kit, yeah, yeah, medic climbing, kit. repair, oh, soldiers or wrecking. wrecking. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and being as how I'm an explosives expert, I'd assume that would be the wrecking kit. Yep. Because as, as far as I'm seeing at the minute, the plan is literally going to be get the sort of explodey stealth people in there, identify the weak points of the building, plant them explosives, get yourselves out. We collapse the building. When hopefully few of the survivors come like crawling out, we riddle them with black shot. If any of them make it to our position, the Kingfish and I can hold them off. And then once that, once everyone's like hit the flower, we, we, we turn around, we high five, there. and walk off into the sunset. Yeah, we get out of there. Um, does that sound like a plan to everybody? That does sound like a plan. Gripped. Um, just to determine this last skill point. Go. Oh, so close. Mm hmm. It's going to be good though the first time you make it like desperate or you'll be like, well, no, level. That's not in the actions attribute, is it? It has to be in the thing that you rolled. Every time you roll a desperate action, Mark XP. Like that. Oh, yeah, it's at the end, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go. I'm going to come and assist. Shit, Jesus, like this this guy doesn't get much at all. <laughs> Almost like he's some kind of rookie. Yeah. Uh naive hope. That's useful. I'll go heavy. Although I'm a bit worried now I've taken this uh, for the Kingfisher and I. Now I've taken this war machine um, special power that despite my like fantastic sort of iron suit, I'm gonna get recast for the second adventure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If you take armor twice, does that increase the the, the, the potency of it? Is it just like spare what, armor? What, what do you mean? So you, in, in heavy as a rookie, you get armor and a shield. Yeah. But you can also take it armor as a utility. So they, do they stack up, or is it just um, just spares? In, in that case, I don't think so because it's, it's the same thing. It would need to be heavy armor to that, which would then replace your armor. Yeah. I was going to say they don't because I looked it up last yeah. time I played yeah. A, yeah. a rookie. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you can have leather armor on top of leather armor. Yeah, it's only okay. if it says like, oh, if you take this, you get it upgrades to fine armor. Yeah, that it gets better. Right. Okay. Let's put my uses of anchor back up. So I'll bring the fresh food and cooking kit just in case, because that's where I've got to choose from. And I'll take hand weapon. And I'll bring a climbing kit. You never know. We're going to be like. Have you got any wrecking way. stuff? Or... It, do it I, does yeah. have ropes, that kind of thing. So yeah. you might be able to do things with it. Come have you got, have you got any like, oil or anything? Or anything we can could, use to wreck could, a building? I could take oil. Because I'm thinking if you take oil, whilst, uh, whilst Vermillion's setting up the explosives, if you put oil around the outside, I've got a flare gun. Anyone comes running out. Yeah, we're home aloneing this shit. Except That's they're right. home and That's we right. are alone. If I had the option to take some micro machines I could lay down outside, I would take it. A <laughs> couple of paint cans swing down as they come out the door. Yeah. Some of that stuff looks like it really would hurt a lot in yeah. that movie. Just incredible amounts of hurt. <laughs> Now, I don't know what you guys think about this, but as the Kingfisher Knight, I do have the ability to take a wrecking kit. However, if I did, I wouldn't have any relinquery on me. Key your relinquery. Okay. Oh, I could take a relinquery as well, but then I wouldn't be able to take anything else. Yeah, that, that's what I've done. Yeah, okay. But, to be honest, I've got a lot less versatility so in that the area. discussion, none of us is taking the relinquery. No, I've got relinquery. No, I'm taking the relinquery. Yeah. 
Fair play. Okay. I've got everything my, else. And I'm going to trust in my Panyar resistance to corruption. <laughs> also, I suppose if it got really desperate as well. I know, because it takes effect when it takes effect, so we couldn't like, hand you a real inquiry or anything. Yeah, and that Panyar resistance is nothing to scoff at. Like, we see the, um, in some sweet. of the previous sessions with, like, rolling five dice... It might not be a problem <laughs> if you get some corruption your way. Okay. Are we all set then? We're we ready to ride out or walk we're, out? We're re we're out. ready to see how awful the engagement rolls. Oh no! Oh no! So Brace yourselves. So it's a supply mission. Well, let's start off with the basics, right? So everyone's a legionnaire. You have one dice. Um, and then I move on to the supply missions. So you have a heavy, so that's good. You don't lose anything from that. Um, if the quartermaster wants to spend food, you can take plus one die. Yep. I can do that. Okay. Food. Okay. You spend one food. You have two dice. Um, Commander, what is the current pressure? Let me just check that for you. Why are you going to ruin my day, Hannes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting excited. I was like, oh, I can get double dice. Yeah, uh, it's five. Okay, five. Uh, so it is more than two. So minus one die. So you're at one die now, which is better than the zero you would have been if uh, the quartermaster can hadn't I, spent food. Can I spend a point of intel? Yes, you can spend uh, intel to get more dice. Okay, I'll spend one point of intel on this mission. Okay, two dice, yes. uh, Marshall, for you to roll yeah. double ones on. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? It's, it's a breaker. Yeah, yeah. It's it's curses pretty... and hexes. Okay, We're gonna, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Hold on to your butts. It's a four. So four, four is, four is not a one. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 yeah. not uh, three, two, or one, which is the the important bit. Um. So we start with a risky position as a result. Uh -huh. Okay. So do we have uh, Hannah? She's just in for the low. She'll be back in a sec. Yeah. Right. So we'll we'll kick off yeah. when. Uh, she gets back, and I'll do my box Thanks. text, as, as you do when you are mastering the blade. Maybe a band, even. So this didn't become as elaborate as I sort of envisioned at the time, because I I was destroyed by work this week. So it, Sorry, it, it didn't turn out the way that I uh, sort of wanted it to uh from that best like my, plans man we all yeah, understand yeah so yeah my engagement role with real life went down the fucking drain so yeah but still um it is good to play it's good to be back in the saddle mm -hmm. commander yeah i i do look forward to these sessions because there's a there's a lot of interest i feel like in in the game just seeing like oh, oh like what happens next the emergent like aspect of the game is really interesting yeah. and there's, also there's... just as a, as a heads up uh on this particular uh, rookie i took the jack of all trades okay. so he's got a few extra skill points just in case oh, you've gone wild is, how, how does that work uh, so you what? get the four base don't you yeah and you take jack of all trades you get an extra two skill ranks but only mm -hmm. in zero skills so you have to take okay yeah, yeah any yeah. ranks in before yeah. so it's just no, that's, that's in case nice. you wonder like why has he got like loads of skills and with, with that especially you could round out a a mad lad of uh yeah. of like just full all first ranks filled in yeah. one particular se section and then when i'm like yep. roll resistance and then you're like six dice what <laughs> What? <laughs> what? You're a rookie. That's pretty much what's going on. Prowess yeah. is is. Oh, I've got I've got a bit of wreck. Got a bit of skirmish. Bit of shoot. Bit of maneuver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've it's got a, a bit of rig as well. Which rig? We don't really have a lot of rig no, in the we game. No, we don't. We don't. So I'm trying to round out the, the thing. A bit of discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Yep. 
Yeah, we have John Rambo over here. Yeah. They didn't draw the first blood. Uh, Looks like a load of me. So. A single trauma box on a rookie, though, is just... Yeah, you don't need to be stressed. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it's the point. Okay, if we are all good, uh, we can take oh, this. Oh, I'm sending the star vipers, minutes. sorry. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that needs to be specified uh, yeah, right well, now. Yeah, you, you mentioned it. Yeah. Okay, just to get that in. Um, well, these, these people came from the star viper, yeah. so I presume that the rest yeah, are I coming to. Sure so. Yeah, so we have, again, look, the star vipers are getting fielded a lot these days. Um, we're, we're meeting a lot of weird shit. Yeah, like. it turns out they have uh, a couple soldiers in there, so... <laughs> That doesn't hurt. Uh, okay, so we begin. <clears throat> Get my reading voice on. The road to Stone Orchard Mansion is flanked by dozens of orchards and gardens, growing all manner of vegetables, berries, and fruits. Thick old oak trees line the road, creating a near canopy over it with their outstretched branches. Autumn has colored swathes of the orchards in shades of red and orange. Dark clouds have brooded over the lands around Storing Orchard Mansion ever since it was lost. The smell of delicious ripe fruits mixes with damp rot as dense banks of mists linger everywhere. Up ahead, draped in mist and shadow, sits Stone Orchard Mansion, two stories tall, crafted in old foreboding Aldermani Gothic style out of stone. So you're you're traveling up this uh, basically dirt cart road and um, uh, all around uh, orchard lands, uh, rows of bushes, trees bearing all kinds of goods of the land. And um, yeah, uh, it is absolutely swamped in, in mist and the sky is dark. Uh, depending on what time of day you uh, set out, it doesn't really matter around here because it's it's near constant sort of threatening storms. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're you're feeling mighty damp already, uh, having walked a fair bit in these enveloping mists. And you've heard more than on one occasion uh, noises from the mists, and maybe. You checked it out, but you found nothing there. Uh, continue on towards, because you know where you're going. It's it's not a question of you getting lost in the mist. It's just there's something there, but you haven't found it yet. And uh, you come to the actual grounds itself of Stone Orchard Mansion. It looms there uh, beyond the courtyard, swathed in mist, mm -hmm. and... <clears throat> you hear uh, several, you think, the burned, the blackened corpses uh, risen by the power of the breaker, sort of scratching around. Uh, it, it sounds like there's ferals around. So these would be the kind of things that are not being directed by one of the more powerful servants of the breaker. You, you think from the marks you've seen and the noises you're hearing very clearly now, um, you're, you're basically in the middle of a bunch of feral burned somewhere in the mists, uh, doing whatever they do uh, in, in there without direction. They're, they're sort of aimless malice, I guess. Um, and you can see the Stone Orchard Mansion there. It's not a long ways away at all, just across the courtyard. But you're outside, and your task being uh, clear this place out. Yeah, uh, I've laid out a clock for you. So here is above your token on the map. There's a four-segment clock. Each segment represents a different place in in the greater scheme of things here. Uh, one of which is, uh, and you know all this because you had access to the steward and the sorry, lady. Sorry, where, where's the clock at? Uh, it should be on the map above your token. I'm not seeing it. No? Hmm. Nope. Hmm. I've set the permissions for it. So. Well, there it is. 
Okay, roll 20 is being weird. Okay, so um, yeah, four segment clock. Um, there's four distinct locations to clear out here. Uh, one being the gardens and the orchards, where, which is where you are in currently. Yeah. Uh, then we have the north wing and the south wing of the mansion itself. And then you know uh, that there is a fairly extensive wine cellar down uh, below the mansion. So those are the four segments of uh, cleaning up to do. However you choose to do that, uh, that's entirely up to you. And uh, yeah, you're, you're here, you're quite close to the mansion and you know that around you in the mist are feral burns. Okay, who did the marshal place in command of this mission? At King Fisher. Okay. So, the most senior. as far as I'm concerned, the plan is how many of the, the sort of the spotty star vipers have we got with us? Five. Five. Uh, yeah, there's a full squad, one of which is being played by a Matthew over there. Okay. So, what I'm going to suggest is that Vermilion take like one or two of the star vipers as cover, mm -hmm. go, go to the building, mm -hmm. sort of quickly look for like structural supports and plant your explosives. While that's going on, um, Viscount Alfonsi, me, and the rest of the Star Vipers will sort of keep a lookout to make sure no like shambling hordes come out of the mist. Once you've collapsed the building, which will hopefully also collapse the wine cellar because it's underground, if we like drop a big building on it, we can then sort of like see what comes out of the ruins and take that out with black powder. Mm -hmm. And then all we've got to worry about is the, um, the orchard. I'm sort of trying to keep out of the way, but I sort of try and get uh, the Kingfisher of Millions attention. Is the, is the mist, is the mist, is it natural mist, would you say? Like, is it just like the weather in this area or is it something else? Like, we need to cover our faces? Like, is it something like... <laughs> it probably wouldn't hurt, Rocky. It's, it's probably a good idea, although I think if it, if it was going to cause us any harm, we, we've been walking through it for several hours, so... We're not all as tough as you, Kingfisher. But um, no, it's, it's a good it's a good idea, lad. It's a good idea. Um, but otherwise, we continue with the plan. Then hopefully, once once the building is, did you say Vi Viscount? Did you say you bought some oil with you? Or? Um, I replaced it for the uh, reliquary. That's that's fine. So so <laughs> the Viscount goes like, I brought this, and then <laughs> there's the, there's the reliquary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I presume none of the generic Star Vipers have any oil on them or anything. I uh, no, they they didn't bring that. Okay, no problems. They, they so, get standard kit. So the million, take take a couple of the Star Vipers, go, go and plant your explosives at the structural weak points. We'll cover the area. We blow the building up, do whatever's there, then we fight our way back out through the orchard. Hopefully, once the explosion's gone, the sort of outrush of wind, if it's a normal mist, should help disperse it a bit. We then fight our way off, pick up pick off whatever undead there are in the orchard. On our way out, we we we'll probably we could probably get some flammable things from the kitchen or the the wine cellar. That was I, I, I'm not aiming to go in there. I'm aiming to blow up said building. What if there's innocent people? Okay, in there? Johannes, could I please have a wreck roll? Can we see the building now? Yes, yes, you, you yeah. can. Uh, okay. It's across the courtyard. Uh, however, you're sort of huddled in, uh, I guess, like a hedge. Uh, yeah. For some cover. Could I have a wreck roll to basically determine whether what I've got with me is enough to blow it up by laying charges around the that, outside? That is, yes. Because uh, from the sounds of the building you described mm. and the way it specifically says that I've got one explosive charge, mm -hmm. uh, are we risky? Yeah, we are risky. Yeah. Yeah. As a result of the engagement roll. Yeah. Uh, do you want to... Oh, 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 boom, it's a six. Yeah, Quality. I was like, nope. Two, two. Oh, no. But so, uh, <laughs> from that, can I assume that, yes, I can take it out with this charge that I've got, but we are going to need to go into the cellar? Okay, uh, let's, let's pick that's... from... Let's pick from one of, uh, one of two options here. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say you figure that with your one charge, you could take out one of the wings from the outside, or maybe if you could get into the cellar, you could probably wipe out, at least collapse like 75% of the thing on itself. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But you need to do it from the inside. Yeah. Well, sounds all the way to go then. Hit the cellar and then collapse it. Yeah. So, uh, we need to go for a recce round. See if we can see the cellar entrance. There's going to be at least one place for the rich people's food to go in where they don't have to see the poor people delivering mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. That is true. So, who's going uh, on a on a range? I would suggest that I'm perhaps not the best for scouting. <laughs> clank, clank. <laughs> right. I was taught how to shoot like a man and fight like a man, not skulk around like a... Yeah, who who would... Who would skulk? Matthew? <laughs> Whoever would do that. Who? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I guess we have the plan. So who's Kingfisher sending? Because you, you have the baton. Well, obviously the million, and I think two of the um, the Star Vipers. Okay. Because this is just to locate the entrance, mm -hmm. right? If you locate the entrance and you need a bit more heavy hitter, I can then roll in. So how, how dense is the, the mist? Like, are we talking like... Uh, one... you, you can see, let's see, about uh, 20 meters pretty good. But there is occasional okay. sort of wafts of it. There's there's banks that move in and out that sort of occlude it almost to like where you can't see anything, but that doesn't last for very long. But I, I, I just I don't want to speak for you, Kingfish. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm learning here. But uh, in training, we, when these sort of situations come up, we, we, we establish a rendezvous point if if we all if if the team gets separated in this sort of situation, like because we could get lost in the mist. That as the lo as the largest, most obvious individual here, I will serve as the rendezvous point. Okay. Rally okay. to me! Indeed, should have rallied put me in I shall raise my mighty war hammer high. <laughs> yeah, raise that heathen hammer high. Indeed. Yeah. So hail to this hammer! <laughs> Before we get our leather pants on. Um, so it's going to be Vermilion, and then I, I'm going to guess it's going to be Baronet and Marquis who are going along um, to help. So, mm -hmm. yeah, please don't please. kill any of my squad because I, I just don't have any names in me right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Rookie One. Rookie Go. One, yeah. Red Shirt One. <clears throat> so, uh, Vermilion, please give us, a, give us a roll of some kind to locate Le Entrance. One would assume it's going to be a scout roll. That would fit Cross the bill. Cross your fingers, guys. Uh, do you want a devil's bargain? Ooh. No, it gives me an extra dice, right? Yeah, well, you, it does. Well, you could push you. yourself for two stress. Yeah. However, I'm not sure if that's advisable. I, I don't know how much my character really wants to find the door and go into the hell cellar, to be honest. Yeah, it sounds like maybe a bad time. <laughs> he was enjoying some armor. Yeah, not not a lot. <laughs> Turns out, not a lot. <laughs> um, I think you you find the entrance. However, you also find that it's been uh, it's absolutely full of stuff. Uh, it's there is um, what seems to be like mining equipment. There's there's pickaxes, there's wheelbarrows, shovels, um, pitons, and more demolition charges. Whatever stuff, and it's all piled up in the entrance. Uh, it's chock full of it. Uh, you cannot enter from the this particular entrance. So they they barricaded it up. Yeah, yeah. It would have right. to be from the inside. Mining equipment. Yeah, that what doesn't. Been like, up to uh, that? However, since you've said that the um, the entrance is, uh, if you report back, the entrance is blockaded. I will point out that if I push myself, I'm capable of feats of superhuman strength, mm. so, such as clearing obstructions from the way of a cellar door with the might of the Kingfisher. None can stand. Indeed. Yeah. Have um, they been excavating something here? Yeah, so we'll, we will go and report back on this. Mm -hmm. I will obviously tell you that if you wish, I can clear out the way, but it's not going to be quiet or subtle. Mm. 
It, it well, is most emphatically not going it's, to be It's quiet, literally yeah. going to be me just like smacking my way through whatever's there. I, I think yeah. the uh, infiltration based plan has to go out the window at this point and we're just going to have to go in and the thing is, I'm not sure fighting our way through an entire building riddled with undead is an option. I don't think no, we have the manpower. I'd still rather go in through the cellar door than the main door and then have to look for the cellars inside if you still want to destroy the building. I, I mean, that, we can I take out one bet. wing and then fight off the other. Have you got any idea which one's got more gribblies in? Well, no, because I've not been in any of them. <laughs> that's, why I like want, a... that's why I want to blow up the entire building, because that saves so, me worrying about it. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps if we do, like, a, a perimeter of the of the, the manor... Is it, is it a manor or, like, a just a house? It's a... It's a... Let it's me... A show. I, have a, I have a sort of reference picture, which I can show you now that you reminded me of it. Um like something like this except a little bit more gothic and sans the cow yeah <laughs> i'm getting i'm getting a certain kind of vibe here uh <laughs> right. cow. Yeah. Is, is it is it the giant creepy mansion full of undead vibe yeah so i've been getting that since yeah. we chose the mission <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so uh, we consider doing a, like a sort of walk around just to see if we can see where this like works being done maybe there's like a trench hold, or something in it. hold on a second we're overthinking this, right? Assuming that picture's vaguely accurate, there is a lot of vegetation in the area, correct? Like trees. And there's, there's, yeah, this is lush. Yeah. But also, um, it's fairly yeah. well tended. Like, it, it hasn't had a lot of time to grow wild, but it, it is lush and well Cause, uh, ground. Because what I'm thinking is, presumably, the, the, the detritus that's in the... Um, in the cellar, it's going to be yeah. like wooden crates and shears as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's what, why don't we just and... why don't we just set a massive fire in the cellar? Yeah, that was the plan. No, no, no. But instead of you having to go in and like plant your explosive charges, we literally just hock a load of wood into the cellar, light it on fire, then let the fire do its thing. Because if it's got wooden supports and stuff like that, like such places tend to. They will catch fire as well. Then, the then, poten then potentially we're saving your explosive charge in case we really need it for later. And also it means we potentially don't have to go into the cellar. We can just set all the rubbish and rubble and stuff on fire. Is the mist coming from the building? Um, no. Okay, no. You, you don't see like a central that's point. Good news. They they seem to um, sort of descend from midair or rise from the ground as as you do. So how does that plan sound? Set fire to the cellar. Uh, Johannes, does that sound to me like it's likely to work? You might need something to cover the... Uh, presuming that we're talking about setting fire to the mining stuff that's clogging mm -hmm. up yeah. the entrance. I'm basically thinking we, we gather some wood, rags, etc. We use a bit of, like, standard gunpowder in with it to, like, get the initial... Mm -hmm. That catches the rags, which catch the wood. We effectively make, like, a big fire starter bundle. Mm -hmm. We hock that into the cellar amidst all the other wooden stuff. Throw a load more wood in. Mm-hmm. Let the fire do its thing, and hopefully it will then catch on to other stuff and spread up into the mansion above. I'm going to say it's it could work, but you need something to... Um, uh, hmm. I, I guess it's it's just going to be you need you need a very good effect level <laughs> for for the actual like blaze to kick off. Yeah. Why don't we just try going through the kitchen and getting into the cellar? Because then we'll potentially have to fight off a horde of undead before we even get there. There is that. There is that. And I'm trying to minimise us having to fight our way through the whole building. Which which we know from the description is crawling with undead and or possessed people. See, I still think you pull the barricade out of the way, I run in and plant the explosives in the right place. I run back out, we all walk away. If that's Whereas what you want to do, that's we what... start a, a blaze going, 
and it doesn't spread as far as we want it to. We've then got all the undead coming out of the house at us and we haven't planted an explosive under the house. Well, you're the explosives expert, Vermillion, so if that's what you want to do, we'll go with that plan. Uh, I'd rather not be running through a burning building to plant explosives. Okay, in which case the plan is the Kingfisher Knight's going to smash his way through the barricade <laughs> in a superhuman feat of strength. Can you smell what the mackerel's got cooking? I'm going to bur burst my way through. I'm, Vermillion's going to be right behind me as I'm smashing my way through. Once I've cleared the way, I'll have my shield out sort of ready to cover in case anything immediately comes into the cellar. Vermilion can then hopefully plant the charge. I'll stay behind to cover Vermilion as they run out. I'll then withdraw. Explosive goes off. Hopefully the building collapses. Everyone's a winner, baby. That's the truth. Where are the Star Vipers positioned in this? The, the rest of the squad? They're going to be positioned outside, guns drawn, in case anything comes out of the mist. Or in case the mm -hmm. explosion prompts a sudden tide of undead to try and cut off our retreat yeah. from the cellar. Do you okay. want me to c cover the entrance to the to the cellar? Please, why can't? I'm happy to, happy to stay. Okay, that sounds good. So we... If you do well, Viscount, I will name a chocolatey biscuit in your honour. <laughs> <laughs> Something mint, I hope. Indeed. <laughs> Light and refresh. Um, so we make our way to the cellar entrance. Chocolate choked with this mining equipment and detritus and uh, the Kingfisher Knight is preparing to burst through uh, clearing the way for Vermilion. Yep. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to ask and mm -hmm. I don't know if this is feasible because I've not really yep. used War Machine before it says you can do you can do like feats of physical force that verge on the superhuman yep. so what I'm wondering is could I effectively like bulldoze my way through the barricade and if there's like supports for the ceiling sort of yeah. like knock one of them out of place and then like hold it up while Vermillion's setting the explosive and then when she runs out I can let it go and jump back and when the, hopefully even if the explosive doesn't take it all down one of the structural supports go and we'll sort of start it going as well I just have an image now the cell is just full of undead you run and smash it grab the beam and then oh in, in, in which case I'll be like I'm stood right next to the exit back out you go Vermillion and I'll let it go <laughs> Um, and we would still triumph, Viscount Leon Alfonsi. Right, the mm. explosive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have it literally ready to go. Okay. With I think a 60 second fuse. Right. And I'm going to shout when it's slit. Okay. None of these guys. Sorry, all of these guys are going to know what word I'm going to shout. None of the undead are going to know what the word is. It doesn't matter mm. what the word is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're gonna have a safe word that means get the fuck out. Banana. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, Whipped cream. And, <laughs> and as soon as I like that, we all need to get a good fifty yards away yeah. from this building. Do not be coming back for me, because I may have got twenty zombie bites on my way in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Oh, what does your how 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 work the war machine? I mean, a war machine. When you push yourself, you can do one of the following: perform a feat of physical force that verges on the superhuman, okay. or reduce the threat and level of all enemies you're facing by one. So I'm basically um, I'm basically going to spend yeah. two stress to like do a feat of superhuman yeah. strength, which is like. Be gone, obstacle! <laughs> yeah, which I, uh, I, I, the thing I'm thinking about is both of those things sound credible, but they do sound separate uses of that. So, if you want to sort of knock out the support as well, uh, I'm gonna say four stress in total. Like if you want to just like hulk out, clear the way, yeah. and knock out the supports, uh, that's four stress. If you just want to clear the way too. In which case, I'll spend two at the start, which I'll cross yeah, off now, then you to clear the way. Works. And then, yeah. if it doesn't look like the explosives yeah. are going, or someone comes and like pinches yeah. it off, I'll just be like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just stood there so... in my ripped like, purple pants going... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it kicks off with the Kingfisher just tearing into this... <laughs> um, it's, it's not pretty. It's not quiet by a long shot. And... Um, it's most, most of all, 
it's not a safe passage. <laughs> it is just a passage in there. Um, yeah, I imagine I'm like and... holding my sort of tower <laughs> shield up. <laughs> yeah. The most direct route. And yeah, yep. I've got my own shield ready as yep. well. Yeah, my, my plan is because mine's like a massive tower shield, I'll sort of be stood in the passage holding it up, mm -hmm. shield, forming like a roof so you can duck down and go underneath my shield. Shield, pistol. Yep. And I'm going to have the explosive in a bag just on a loop over my head so I can literally mm -hmm. pull it over my head, yep. drop it, light it. Gun. Mm -hmm. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah, so we do this and uh, you charge in, Vermilion, into the darkness of the wine cellar. And you find that there is a surprising amount of light there considering that the undead don't usually light things um i'll put that down to my cat size in my panic yeah <laughs> you 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 prowl in there and uh you almost knock off um knock over a, a, a shelf uh just because you you try to step over some pickaxes on your way in um the shelf is is full of wine however uh from beyond the shelf uh where there should be you can see from the remnants of a wall there should be a wall here like this is uh, a wall in the cellar it's been knocked over and uh, into the earth towards the courtyard so away from the mansion they've expanded uh, apparently the cellar space out from the mansion towards the courtyard and there's a whole mined out space there uh, which is like double the size of the wine cellar uh, of what it used to be and uh, let me get my notes here. Um, so, uh, th yeah, this is the remnants of the wine cellar. It's been greatly expanded outside uh, of its original bounds towards the courtyard. Uh, you can see here as well, um, in somewhat like orderly fashion, there's pick piles of pickaxes, shovels, and other tools of the mining trade. And uh, up ahead is a large open space, and you can see six of the burned the uh, blackened bodies uh, taken over by the breaker's uh, foul craft. Um, they stand relatively motionless. They sort of like like twitch back and forth a little bit um, in what seems like a circle of standing stones, uh, partially covered in dirt. Uh, the stones, I mean. Um, you can see uh, more stones, similar to the standing stones, which the burned stand inside, uh, within the circle half dug out from the walls so there's more of these sort of halfway buried in the walls which are just earthen uh bare dirt walls. okay can i see the load bearing wall that i was originally going to go and put my charge yes. next to yes you, you can Is see it the supports... anywhere near this stone circle thing uh it's sort of halfway between where you are and where the stone circle is so like sort of the halfway point between those two the main support uh, wall slash beam. It suddenly looks a lot more important to blow up that stone circle than it does the house above it. You're the you're the you've got discretion in the explosives bit. I'm not an expert. Do do it. Do what you think's right. Additionally, as you do the math of like, okay, oh, wait, that, that's more. the that's the actual staircase that goes up into the the larger or maybe the kitchen. Or the servants area. Well, I think is if you um, blow up the stone circle, I can potentially still knock the support beam down. That's true. Um, in there, uh, there's this sort of ambient gloom, kind of like sickly brown green luminescence from nowhere um, in this like larger space, and in that sort of half light, uh, you can see these burnt twitch in the middle of the circle and. You can see two young women, peasant clothes, nothing stands out really from them. Uh, two young women walking in circles around in like, uh, one of them goes clockwise, one of them goes counterclockwise, around the circle of stones oh with gosh. a steady pace. They they daub something on the stones from from bowls that they carry. So you're, you're lobbing in the... <laughs> Are, are you lobbing in? Uh, I'm getting some. Yeah, the, hand there's signs. there's a big, big bomb. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, how far in do I need to run to be able to th throw it and know that it's going to blow up in the middle of that circle? 
I think that's entirely a question of how well you roll here. Okay. So. Um, in which case, I'm going to get a bit closer. Maybe use yeah. that load-bearing wall for a bit of cover since it was yeah. halfway in between us. Um, do I have time to add black shot into this bomb? I do have black shot with me. Hmm. It didn't occur to I me mean, to specifically sure, state sure. it previously. Sure. But yeah, um, I, I'm adding... I'm basically ripping open one of the charges that I've got for my musket and scattering yeah. it into the back yeah, of the bomb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then chucking the bomb. Um, just some home cooking. <laughs> okay, having seen that Vermilion's gone in a bit further, yeah. I'm basically, as I said, I was like locating like the load bearing pillar. I'm basically going to have like my, my hammer ready mm-hmm. to like spend the other two stress to like, as Vermilion runs out, yeah. smash the support beam and then get out myself while the going's good. Right, so I'm doing a wreck roll, yeah? Oh, that sounds good. Yep. Break it down. Are we risky or are we desperate yet? I think we're still risky. Uh, it's very soon going to be desperate, though. Okay. <laughs> Do I get a different effect for the black shot, or is it a bonus I, dice? Or? I think it's going to up your effect level by one. Um, yeah. So, effect limited? Or great? Uh, I th- let's go with standard. It would be limited just because you're lobbing the thing instead of right, uh, okay. actually setting it. But let's go with standard because you're you're adding in some extra spice. Yeah, boy! Yeah, you do it. So you lob it there and you yell whipped cream. <laughs> and, <laughs> at which point, I'm so still there, <laughs> I'm gonna wait till like the millions going past me. Then I'm gonna spend the two stress yeah. to bring the support beam down yeah. and get out. Yeah, go so ahead I'll and, cross and them spend off. your points. Vermilion does what Vermilion does best and uh, scampers the fuck out of the cellar. Um, and uh, outside, uh, as you, you both of you make it out, uh, you see the first uh, looming figures on sort of not on all fours, maybe like on, on three limbs and sort of like halfway crawling uh, out from the mist towards where you are, and you can see several of them in the mist. I'm going to be like, Star Vipers, three rounds rapid! <laughs> Come okay, yeah, that, firing! That, that sounds like a roll, John. Um, that sounds like a martial roll. Uh, but I don't get to tell you what to roll, but that, that sounds exactly like that. You could use discipline like as well, because I think if, if this... Yeah, if, discipline, if he's, discipline he's got is... got force of personality. Yeah, d- discipline is what I'm going to be going for. Yeah. Because he doesn't have the martial skill. Are we on? Still on? Risky. Or? Um, I think we're now. We're about to be. We're, we're desperate now because. Oh, yeah. You you have an idea of enemies being around you, but you have no idea how many or where exactly they are. So. It's a six. Get yeah, it. You do it. So. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm gonna. Please, st- please sixes, stay with us. <laughs> Bless us, so, gods of row twenty. Yeah. So I've I've marked two on the clock um, for the sort of assorted destruction, which will soon follow from the, <laughs> from the explosive charge. Good job, Valiant. Yeah. And um, yeah, the star vipers start shooting into the mists, and they are hitting as well. Uh, they're making some good shots. They hold off the threat for on, the moment. Come on, Viscount, pour it on. <laughs> they hold off the threat for the moment however um, yeah so you're shooting trying to figure out okay where are we actually going to be going now uh, which way is the best way to escape where are the ferals and where are they not and yeah you probably start moving away a little bit and then there's the <laughs> under the ground and uh, <coughs> the building starts uh, folding in on itself uh, like a pancake. Good job. And there's a giant gush of dirt speckled air from the <laughs> Does the giant... Cellar. I was hoping for this. Does the giant gust of air disperse the mist at all? Uh, I think it probably does. However, for the immediate future, it will just replace it with dirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but the mist will not be there once the dirt actually goes down, so that's good if you plan to stick around. Yeah, my, my plan's are literally to like hold, wait till the dirt starts settling a bit, then we can reassess and work out what we need to do. Yeah. So you're holding in the dirt, 
you star rappers shooting uh, incoming ferals. There seems to be a lot of them around. And one of the things that you see is from your position and through the dirt cloud is uh, as the building starts collapsing in on itself, there's a crack that goes from the sort of main entrance stairs uh, across the courtyard and the courtyard flagstones start dipping down is, into is the, the ground. Is the crack coming anywhere near us? So? No, it's, it's just going across the courtyard and the, oh. the flagstones are slipping in because that's where the empty space was. Entirely unsupported because they don't do safety. <laughs> these, I, I'm, these I'm imagining like the, the sort of aftermath of this and we're talking about to the uh, Lady Yvonne Mayer and we're going to be like, well, there's two bits of news. The good news is your place is thoroughly cleansed. The bad news is, your place is no longer a place. Yeah, it's it's, it's not... been replaced. <laughs> so would have been nice if you told us about the evil stone circle under your courtyard. I'm assuming she didn't know. <laughs> but we 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 couldn't. You're, you're right. We we couldn't leave it there for millions. So yeah, but, I mean that's like. Probably the next it was mission built would have been built into the foundations of yeah. their ancestral yeah. home. It was yeah. part of that, the wine. That's right. If I had, if I had any doubts at all <laughs> about blowing up the building, which I didn't, but in some alternate reality where I had doubts about that plan, that dispelled them instantly. Oh, should we blow up this building? Obviously, there's a stone circle underneath it. Bring it down! Bring it down, Legolas! Kill it! Um. Good. So you're, you're I do holding apologise, their... Johannes, because I expect you probably had a plan for like what happened when we went inside the building and oh yeah, like of course, the downstairs but... of the building yep. and the upstairs of the building, oh, and yep. we just bypassed it and blew the whole Come thing the, up the, the, it was scary. The, 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 amount, how, the amount of games I've been in with Johannes and how mission focused I'm in these games, there's no way you wouldn't have expected me to just blow up the building. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, and that is true for most of the missions. However. I think that's that's one of the uh, things that I I think this particular game really encourages you to do is like try and figure out a novel solution to things because you, you're really like MacGyvering it across the land because you don't have well, anything. Well, that's it. Don't get me wrong. If we'd have had like a massive platoon of men, I'd have been like, yeah, let's sweep in room by room. We'll sweep mm -hmm. the place clean. But when we're like, oh, we've got seven men and potentially a mansion full of possessed devil worshipping witchery types and <laughs> smoky Cajun undead. Oh yeah, uh, uh, no, and none of no. us could afford to bring a reliquary with oh, us, so there's oh, every God. chance that we mm -hmm. might turn into grimly yeah. brainwashed yeah. undead at any and moment. No chance. And that's that's great thinking because there's especially with the breaker, uh there's like no rules anymore. Whereas with the with the blighter you can tell like, oh they're, they're dripping all sorts of nasty. I'm going to keep away and be safe. Whereas with the breaker, it's going to be like, oh, that's looked like a peasant. And then the peasant goes, Bleh! and then you're like, well, I'm cursed now. So <laughs> that's cool, I guess. Um, okay, so yeah, you're holding, you can see the building collapse. The courtyard is collapsing uh, uh, because there's a giant space underneath it because they mined it out. Um, the smoke is blasted away to be just replaced by dirt clouds and uh, uh, you can hear this sort of raspy uh, sort of agonized monotonic droning mantra from you think the the sort of um, pit that has appeared in the courtyard now as a result of the explosion um, it's fairly disturbing it's almost like uh if, if you get the the heebie-jeebies when someone like scratches a blackboard that's the kind of effect it has on you it sounds like maybe human voices um but so i'm gonna very quickly relay to the kingfisher knight what i saw mm -hmm. under there yep now did does it sound like the chanting that was going on in there yeah it does Okay, yeah. um, Viscount Alfonso, have you got a gun? Are you good with it? I am trained, sir, yes. I, I can fight. In which case, Vermillion, stay here with the Star Vipers, Alfonso with me, and what we're going to do is we're going to head to, like, not perilously close to the edge of the pit, mm -hmm. but, like, now, my plan is then I'm going to fire one of my flares down into the pit yeah. whilst uh, Alfonso gets his rifle ready with his black shot or whatever. 
-hmm. hopefully when the flare goes down we'll be able to see who's giving it the old evil chanting and he can pick them off (laughs) yep okay good so you and and in fact to be honest if i can hit if i can hit one of them with the the flare gun i'll I'll try that because why not yeah maybe maybe you do you don't need to roll for it so you fire your thing down there he's like (laughs) that seems like a thing and uh your fair flare um shows you a scene of devastation (laughs) because uh, Vermilion blew this thing up. Right. So there's uh, earth, there's flagstones from the courtyard, um, grass, uh, there's bits of blackened bodies, uh, which you quickly figure out, yeah, that's where the droning is coming from. There's dismembered, blasted apart, burnt down there, here and there, just spread around. And uh, you, the, the torsos that are still intact enough as like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just gonna d- direct Vicar Alfonsi to like th- the most vocal ones, just like shoot him in the head. Yeah. So Alfonsi, let's let's get shooting zombies in a barrel, I guess. Okay. I will. I will load some black shot. Okay. And try that, and, uh... that sounds like the thing to do with zombies. Okay. Are we in desperate at this at this current stage? Uh, yes, and it will very soon become apparent if you fail. Why? Oh. Oh, wonderful. Why that is. No pressure. Okay. No pressure. Yeah. Standard effect at the moment? Uh, yes, yeah, stand- yeah, no, oh, no, no, great effect, because you're, you're, you're about to kill a zombie. I, if you I'm just going to throw out the suggestion, Vicam, that maybe you might want to push yourself a bit. Okay. You don't have to, I'm just throwing the suggestion out there. Uh, well, I don't know what we're dealing with yet, so I'm going to hold for the moment. <laughs> yeah. Basically, if you hit this zombie with black shot, if, like, these these zombies because it's not just the one right now so if you yeah so you do it and you're using black shot so yeah the viscount just like viscount burns them uh the burnt i'm gonna clap on my shot i would say good job viscount we'll make a (laughs) fighting man of you yet Mm -hmm. uh you can see in the midst of this devastation the sort of toppled over i think a couple of these standing stones are shattered um and out of the pit as the Viscount is shooting into the pit uh, destroying these burnt uh, you see the ravaged bodies of these two peasant girls uh, half of their clothes burnt uh, flesh mangled by the blast they're sort of hovering up quasi like marionette like from the pit okay. I'm going to tap the Viscount and <laughs> Gesture at the you table. see them two yeah. ring-looking chicks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Viscount, you've you've stopped the droning. The droning is no more. Whatever that was, oh. that's gone now. But out of the like covered in dirt and and their own giblets because they got hurt by the blast, um, these two peasant girls surely um, rise up from the pit in the air and they are honing in on you because you're at the at the edge. So why can't? What do you do? Uh, the Kingfisher is giving you the, like, keep yeah. on with I, the black I, shot. I, I'm, I'm there with like my, uh, with my hammer ready in case they come for us. But yeah, I'm giving him the nod. I'm going to unmute myself and then I'm going to shoot them really well. Good. I, that, is... that sounds like a great plan. And I'm going to push myself because I really need to kill this one. Take it to the limit. <laughs> Do you okay. want a devil's bargain? What is the devil's bargain? I can ask without. The devil's thinking. bargain is you're gonna get cursed either way. Nah. Which, which translates to corruption. Nah, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not too keen on that just right now. Okay. I'm not too keen. Yeah, just putting it out there. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna shoot. Still desperate. Uh, yes, you, very much so. It's okay. it's about to go down bad <laughs> for you. <laughs> And is the effect now standard because these things are... Uh, the standard yeah. is going to be great. Uh, sta- standard. The effect yeah, is yeah. going to be great. Yeah, okay. um, these things are undead enough for a black shot okay. to affect them. One is die one from the thing. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, partial success. So what that means is... Uh, let me put up some, some clocks here and I will take into account the... Um, so should be on the token layer now i don't know if you can see yeah, them I can see it. good so there's two shadow witches um and i will tick 
them both a couple of times. Oh, just I, can only see the, I can only see the first shadow, which... Okay, I will mm-hmm. hopefully get the oh, second yeah, one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, I ticked them both just on account of the explosion that they were close to, and uh, uh, you're, you're doing the thing. Uh, so, I'm just going to pick one at random. So, you do your, your effect on... Well, your effect would be great because of the, the black shot instead of standard, which is what you rolled. But um, they are a threat to you. Are uh, how's your rifle or your musket? Uh, it's just a musket, standard unfortunately. Musket. Okay. So with. But it's my musket. Yeah, you Yeah, it's there's many like it. Yes. Um, with black shot, you're tied, so it would be standard effect, I guess. So for the first. Shadow Witch. It doesn't matter which one it is. It's just the one that I'm marking your shot on. So you shoot one of these and you blow out, I think uh, it's other entire arm. You shoot it in the shoulder. Arm is sort of sheared off in what looks like a really rapid chemical burn. Just like eats through the flesh as your black shot hits it and the arm flops down. uh, Like falls into the pit. And uh, there's a there's a screech and uh, an entirely 100% human voice of a peasant girl goes, Oh my God, no, please. And uh, the the countenance doesn't match that voice. It, it stares at you like seething hatred. I'm not okay. going with that, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen this before. Uh, you, you saw this in the in the mountains when you were with Green. It's Christmas lies, Christmas. rookie. Yeah. It's lies. Don't fall for it. And uh, as because it's uh, it's a partial success, you are the proud owner of uh, three corruption as this uh, shadow witch, having finished pleading for mercy, uh, raises up a hand, uh, pulls down the two middle <laughs> fingers. And raises up the classic horns, and uh, there's a there's a bit of darkness that just spills out of. There's even no voice, just like black mist, like vomits out of her mouth, and uh, you start fading. Uh, you you feel like you're gonna black out. So the effect is going to be um, uh, three corruption coming your way. But my reliquary can I absorb the three corruption, right? That's the... uh, it, it can if you want to spend those uses. Yes, you can sink them. <laughs> Yeah. So what what happens then? You feel the the darkness yeah. upon you. Uh, what do you do? Yes. Yeah, so as I, I've shot it, it's come over, said the thing, and it, it does this weird thing, and I feel I, I just kind of like I look like I'm about to like drop my gun and kind of grab my head in confusion and pain. But then this like this like space around my heart starts to, like burn out, and the little the symbol that's been given to me by the quartermaster kind of like erupts into this blue white fire briefly and crumbles to dust by my hair uh, and I kind of like shake it off Hail a Swift style and then <laughs> take it again mm-hmm. yeah so Kingfisher uh, yeah there's some hesitation on account of the Viscount but um, good shots the rookie is good uh, there's something going on there that you don't know about, but um, yeah. Okay, um, I think Vermilion, what, what are you up to uh, as this whole thing is going on? Well, we were told to keep an eye out on the woods, weren't we? And make sure nothing was like coming in while mm-hmm. they made sure nothing came out of the mansion. Yep, so good. I'm assuming we're staying fairly close to them and effectively looking out from the hole. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. I'd probably say to the others, keep your eyes out and go to help these guys because it looks like they could do with an extra gun right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that sounds good. You stand guard uh, against what you think is probably at least a dozen feral burnt in the scampering around in the mist. They seem like not the sort of like aggressive army that you've encountered with the blighter before where like it's it's more or less like warriors coming at you uh these things are blatantly not being guided by any greater intelligence they kind of act like animals um 
So there's just like staying outside of your vision, like prowling in the mist, sort of like waiting for you to make a move. Um, okay, so Kingfisher, uh, what do? Uh, there is, and in fact, before you do anything, um, when these these peasant girls um, land on fairly unstable ground, because the courtyard is all kinds of messed up now, um, there is uh, a curse being flung your way as well. Uh, one of the girls, uh, I think, bites off her thumb and spits blood at you, uh, which will result in Bite a... My thumb at you, sir. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, so which means, basically, before you do anything, do you want to resist the oncoming corruption? How, how much corruption are we talking? It, it's going to be uh, three. I'll take it on my rolling crew. Yep. All right. So, the blood splatters on your... Um, boots i think and then you you have your reliquary which i guess goes the same way as uh yeah i, I imagine i sort of hold it up and like, say mm -hmm. briefly flares into like fire and then mm -hmm. that crumbles to ash and like drips out of my hand mm -hmm. yeah and uh the the girl just like hisses at you uh gritting her teeth with with her own blood like dribbling from her her lips like <laughs> what do you do how close is the um, the witch to me? A very approachable, like ten meters away. No, no problem. There's okay. Two of them, they stand side by side there. Uh, and can I can I just check as a rules query? Because I know these yep. are threats too. Yeah. If I'm if I'm going with like a fine heavy weapon. Yeah. Would You're I be able to? Two. Okay, so I'm on equal terms with them. Yes. Okay. And if you want to lower their threat, then you are on. Like you're on See, top. I could do that, but if I take another two stress, I'm going to gain a trauma. Oh, well, yeah, that, mm, yeah, okay. But with with a fine weapon, you're on equal terms. Cool. Yeah, so so basically my plan is just to wade forward with the double-handed hammer and that baseball yep. swing at the head. Yep, the, uh, that sounds great. The foul demon! <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, skirmish. Six all day, every day. Okay. Oh, I, forgot to... <laughs> I forgot, forgot to offer you the devil's bargain, but I, I guess you did fine uh, either way. So, which one are you you hitting? The first or second one? It's entirely up to you. Uh, well, which whichever one's nearest to me, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm, I'll just put it on the first. Yeah. Uh, the one without the hand, and now. The head is sort of turned at an awkward angle <laughs> as a result of your hammer swing as you lay into this this poor poor girl who just screams in pain as you crunch the bone. I, I presume now, like, Vermillion's running over. Vermillion will be able to get a shot off as well. Yeah, if, if you want to. Yes, so please. Get some of that blood I... powder. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, sh the, the... The way I was seeing the scene, like, we've mm. got the pit here. And these yep. two have walked down into the pit and these two women are in there. And Vermilia's yep. just sort of up on the top here. Mm -hmm. uh, am I going to get any bonus for having that range and that like oh, high ground? High ground. It? I have the high ground. Because <laughs> it's, it's definitely easier to shoot rabbits when you're at the top it of is. the hill. It is, in fact, uh, easier. And I think you 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 can get an extra die on that for your Marvelous. advantage. And we're desperate, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, desperate. Just because you're dealing with some stuff now, which and if I is... use black shot, it's great effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it will. Uh, yeah. What is the weapon you're using? Um, I think it's a pistol. Yeah, it's a pistol. Just a pistol, not a fine pistol. Just a pistol. Okay, so with a pistol and a black shot, you're on equal terms with them. So standard effect. Right, okay, where's that done? Which is just to again. So what that means is if you shoot the woman uh, missing an arm and who Kingfisher just smacked, if you hit that woman, that, that Shadow Witch, with your black shot, you will destroy it, her. Hey. Boom! There we go. So, yeah, describe what happens. This this woman missing an arm, head turned almost, almost like all the way uh, to the back, and... Uh, you're loading your pistol with black shot. You're 
you're stepping to the edge and you're shooting. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, I imagine I've just done my swing and I'm just getting ready to do another one and the witch is sitting like... As yeah, the shot goes off. There's the, the streak of light from like next to your head and uh, the witch's uh, head just goes up in uh, alchemical... It's not... I think I think because we're there's much because we're still in combat. Obviously, there's one left. I just sort of like mm -hmm. turn my head a little bit and like the corner of my mouth will like quirk a bit of the smile and I'll give it the old like yeah, give it the old nod. Uh, the other witch, then, um, hmm, I guess the kingfisher is closest now because you came in with your your smashy. Yeah. So, what about the rookie? Viscount, do you, do you want to get up on some business? I'm going to try and shoot get, you. Get some of that black pizzle in there, son. <laughs> I'm going to try and shoot the other witch. Yeah, so same deal. It's, it's desperate and uh, okay. uh, standard effect because of your regular ass musket. But you have black shot. I have black shot. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Boom! You you tag the witch, uh, who's I think the uh, midsection now has a, a, a chunk missing, and just smoke rising from it as you you blow away with this black shot. Yeah. Can I just check the first witch is dead? Yeah. Yeah, the first witch is now um, sort of half mangled body and half just ash. Sorry, I was just checking. I wasn't sure whether yeah. those two like bits left. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I I forgot to pull that out. So look, yeah, the first no, witch. It's, is, it's all good. My roll twenty just been a bit sketchy, so I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Which is, uh, it's been sketchy for me as well. Like setting up those clocks, it's been yeah uh, cursed. So yeah, the shadow. Oh, nice shot, rookie. Shadow, Good job, witch, Viscount. Like falls you, on on her knees and just like cries uh, inconsolable uh, and. Uh, Oh, it calls on to her now non-existent guts. <laughs> it's hammer time. Go and put and, her out uh, of her misery. It's not, it's not, I've already had my go for this round. round. I think what she is... Um, hmm. Hmm. She is going to... Uh, I think she is uh, when she's done uh, crying for just a few moments uh, she scampers deep into the wreckage uh, of the of the pit uh, she is not in the pit anymore she is in the wreckage uh, which you could also get to but it's a uh, it's going deeper underground as the song says um, yeah she she disappears into the wreckage like a scampering small rodent and uh, you can hear the the shuffling in the mists as the the ferals uh, close in as she's scampering into the wreckage is she still visible to the viscount and vermilion it, it is not uh, it, it went it burrowed in somewhere okay in which case quick question this wreckage that she's in how mm -hmm. near is it to the big pit thing uh, it's sort of, uh, if you think like a like a crater, it's not yeah. a true crater, but the, the shape. Um, we were sort of in the sort of middle area here. She went in and then deep. So she's somewhere beneath the rubble. Okay, because what I'm wondering is if I took another two stress and gained an extra trauma mm -hmm. to use the superhuman effort, could I effectively like push all this, like the rubble and stuff from the edge of the crater to like further collapse the crater in on top of where she's gone so basically just rain like debris and rocks and stuff down on her rather than always have think, to pick our way in and deal with it yeah yeah you could you could try and use the the rubble which yeah. she's now under to try and like collapse yeah, just, it cr just crush her basically because yeah. i don't want any um, of us having to go down there there's you could also do that with um a wrecking kit if you have such a thing it, amongst you I'm just pointing this out because you might not want the trauma if you have the wrecking kit. So. 
Okay, in which case I'll assume I've not thought of that because I'm not a wrecker, but just as I'm sort of psyching myself up, like ready so, to be like, here I go. Yeah. The way she headed. Taking off the pauldrons. Would that no, I'm just cricking my name. Because she, as I remember, yeah. I went in here mm -hmm. and then their bit was like here and we're now standing mm -hmm. in that, right? Yeah. The way she went, does that happen mm -hmm. to be where all those barrels were? It's, uh, I guess, yeah, that away. However, you know uh, that the landscape underground has changed drastically. <laughs> yeah, there's been some landscape. remodeling. <laughs> so Indeed. That that sounded like it was going to be a fairly tough wall because they'd left it alone and it had still got the barrels next to it. Mm. And I'm thinking there's got to be some spirits in there that the smaller charges that I've got with me It'll at least like make some fire or something, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm sticking my charge into, you know, go go into the edge of the hole near there mm -hmm. and dropping my charge like into a hole between the rubble sort of thing, mm -hmm. hoping that at least I'm going to do a reasonable amount of damage to whatever's left of the underneath. Yep. Wreck. Are we still desperate? Yeah. Um, yes, and um, not for entirely clear reasons, by the way. Uh, we, as a as a group of spectators, we don't know why this is desperate. Yeah, that, that might become apparent, but, but it doesn't because you roll a critical. So. <laughs> oh. Booyah! Two sixes. So, That's another yeah. two XP, isn't it? So what that does is uh, it does. Um, oh, let's go with standard. Yeah. So uh, I put in two more. So the witch is in a bad way, on mind. fire, underground, being crushed by debris, uh, flagstones, and whatnot. And um, so she's basically trapped there. Her Probably her limbs are kind of ruined. Um, she's not going anywhere. And you're not getting to her, uh, more importantly. <laughs> Works <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen, uh, at least not today. So uh, what happens is there's, um, there's a silence that descends after your, uh, your alchemical, alchemical charge goes in. Yep, go on. I was going to say, as soon as the, as soon as, like, the million's like, sending the charge down, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to say, when you're done here, follow me. And like, as I'm saying that, I'm going to be running back to where the Star Vipers are to like, support them in case like a tide of undead come like swarming out of the apple trees or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, they're not charging. Uh, you, you know they're still there. You can see some of them yeah. crawling around, but they're not They're not charging. And uh, you're sort of taking stock. You're, you're sort of preparing, I guess, to exit. Um, like getting everyone together, regrouping, and uh, there's a there's a deep silence that sets in, and then there's a there's a whispering that you can hear, which is uh, a peasant girl voice, uh, which it doesn't help. You try it, Kingfisher, it doesn't help. <laughs> you, you nope, nope, none of that, and then like you hear it anyway, and um, you know, the the peasant girl voice says uh, it's like. I know. I I just wanted to have a few apples, maybe, maybe some cheese to take home for my children. Do not then... listen to the lies of the breaker, man. And uh, people start looking about. Just like some of the star warpers, like whispering to each other, like, "Do you hear this thing? Like, someone's talking about like." I I'm just gonna horses. say, it is the lies of the enemy to bid devilers, man. Harden your hearts. And you, For the you know, Star Vipers, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give that that Zemyati sort of like <laughs> scream to try and drown it out. Yeah, uh, give me a roll. Uh, I guess discipline is what you're going for there. Yeah, pretty much your thing. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you you give them the speech like, don't. Listen, like whatever it is, like don't. Unless you have faith don't. in the Legion and your brothers at arms. One of the uh, Star Vipers has sort of done that uh, Frodo thing from the Lord of the Rings, where you're just like, 
sort of twitchily doing it anyway, even though you don't want to or you know that you shouldn't. But uh, he's sort of wandered a bit back and uh, looked into the pit, and he's like, K K "Kingfisher, sure. Uh, are you sure we shouldn't?" I'm just gonna get haul him back into line. <laughs> get back in line, man! Like, are you sure we shouldn't get the girl? And this is the important part where he's like, "You're slapping him, like, shut up." <laughs> <laughs> you're dragging him back and then you're like oh when he's like it, it looks mighty dangerous down there and and she's all alone and some of those rocks are glowing and you're like mm? <laughs> and uh, it's like no there's a there's a picture that it flaring about and then there's a like her his voice disappears entirely and uh there's a sort of uh huff of uh smoke that rises up from the pit just like exhales from the pit and uh there's a um, there's a deep unease that settles on on everything everything sort of slows down and everything's quiet there's no shuffling in the mists the burnt have sort of like frozen in place what do you do uh it is weird everything stopped uh okay well, well if the if the um if the burnt have stopped moving, yeah. I'm gonna tell the bloody star vipers to like pick them off while mm -hmm. they're stood still doing nothing. I'm cold. I can do that. Uh, well, I was gonna say if you've got any sort of like explosives left. I don't think I have because I've used my wrecking kit and I've used the what I bought with me. Yep. Yeah, I'm all exploded out. I've got plenty of guns left though. Well, right. I've got a gun left. In, in which case, if you can see where that like sm see anything where that smoke's coming from, mm -hmm. which I suggest is going to be our, our new enemy, so sort of taking that out might be preferable because we can just yep. have to start off. Okay, yeah, the uh, I'll head in the direction. Yep. So take Alfonsi with you. The the mist is being spewn out from the pit now, and you can see from the uh, roll twenty, I've marked the witch as dead. So both witches mm -hmm. gone now. However, the second Shadow Witch, as she died, and because she did this, she died, she has uh, lain a final enchantment uh, on, on here, drawing upon the stones, which some of you shattered, some of them are still there, um, and she has basically exchanged whatever remained uh, inside her wrecked body for a final uh, hex upon your souls. So uh, you can quickly make out that there's nothing you can interact with in the pit. It's just a ruined pit with mist pouring out. In, for in which reason. case, let's take out these static zombies and get the hell out of here. Yeah. So as you're walking, uh, and you can just walk, because the, the feral burnt are just sort of there with their unseeing eyes. We, 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 we could walk, but we're not going to. Okay, yeah, so you're you're sprinting away. Yeah, literally, firing. I, 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 they're going to be firing as they run. As I sort of run past a few, I'll be like... <laughs> yep, and uh, there's black spots appearing in all of your visions as you, you make your way away from Stone Orchard. Uh, and by the time you make it out from the sort of main area, there's like disparate uh, gardens and, and fields laid out in the sort of lands of the mansion but when you make out of the uh, gardens directly being maintained by the mansion itself um, by that time you can barely see you have blasting headaches um, you think um, you, you taste blood maybe and the the symptoms vary between you uh, there's uh, you, you think one of the Star Vipers is hearing voices because they're constantly like mumbling something like, no, no, I don't, I'm not going to do it. No, no, mom, no. And uh, there's various things going on by the time you make it out of the lands and uh, you're free to, as always, uh, try and resist. However, this is a partial thing. You can't mitigate all of this um, because the, the witch uh, used the stones to do this thing and exchange death in in exchange for power, which is a powerful thing. Um, I'm going to say her final death curse is going to be uh, for corruption on all of you. Uh, you can resist that with resolve, and yep. you can knock off um, half of it with uh, with your 
your things there. So I, I will attempt to resist. Yeah. You, I, also, uh, resistance always works. It's just how much stress does it cost you. So if you resist, mm, so you will one, knock it down. One for me. Boom. Yeah. So one stress and two corruption for the Kingfisher Knights. And four stress and two corruption for the Viscount. So you click on resolve. Yeah. And oh, sorry, you've already, did, you've already done yeah. that. Oh. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's sorry, two, I didn't see two that. stress for you. Yeah, two stress two and stress. two corruption. Yeah. Cool. The witch's hateful last words, which you didn't even hear, uh, scar your psyches as you make it out uh, of this incredibly cursed land. <laughs> and uh, you, you make your way back to um, Westland having successfully, I think, wrecked the place, literally. I prefer the term, uh, cleansed. The trek back is a somber affair, I think, because there's the sort of like little breakdown that everyone is dealing with inside their own heads. I, I would like to also suggest as a, a little thing that uh, when we get back, our marshal should rename the guy who was talking to himself as Smeagol. <laughs> like, yeah, what, what does he want, bridges? <laughs> yeah. So that was Crimson Fire. Um, we didn't quite burn the place down, but we tried uh, blowing it up, at least, which we succeeded. At, so, yay! We were successful in that mission. See, I'm thinking, like, considering what happened at the end when we all got cursed by the witch, can you imagine if we'd had to fight our way through a whole building full of undead? And then fought those two witches with all mm -hmm. the death curses, and they're like, metal curses. <laughs> it would have been fine. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm going to say, like, fighting the two witches in the cellar when they had their whole circle set up, that might have been a. That would have been bad times. Ordeal. <laughs> yeah. But you destroyed that. So, like, I think yes, we're probably we going to discuss, because that wasn't a part of the plan, and you didn't have to do that. I think we might discuss some extra on top because the Lady Von Meyer doesn't really care about the the, the place itself. Like that, that's going to be fine. It, it the Lady Von Meyer at best have a very good explanation for the evil stone circle yeah. that her ancestral yeah. homes built on top of. Yeah, <laughs> might have been a corrupted stone circle. You you come to learn that the Lady Von Meyer hasn't been to the stone orchard ever. Um, she lives in Westlake, and she has other people do that for her. Ah. So she doesn't know, I didn't know, but she is, as a result of you guys, um, well, you, you already kind of knew it already going in. Uh, she's kind of a pious person, which is why she's also giving you a, like a box of reliquaries as a, re a reward for this. Yes. Um, she, she, uh, when you give her the, the brief, the debrief, um, she, I'm, I think we're gonna toss in some extras, something extra, because her being pious and you destroying this incredibly not good thing that was if, apparently if on her. If she's got any like retainers who want to sign on with the legion, that'd be rightfully received. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If she well, can spare I, any horses. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm all of say, the above, please. I'm gonna say, take your pick. She will give you uh, a downtime action. So cool. she's gonna. Basically, take care of you for an evening. I.e., you can supplies. you can have a, a free downtime action on account of the Lady von Meyer because she enjoys the fact that you destroyed this unholy thing that was apparently on her land, <laughs> which she already yep. sent you out to destroy unholy shit, and yep. she didn't yep. know about this. So, as, as a point of order from the Marshal standpoint, we, we, we really could help. Thing. Reducing the stress tracks on the soldiers and the specialists because that will prevent them from getting trauma. Mm -hmm. Tick up circles this one. Cool. Okay, so that um, was Crimson Fire. And we and, get the uh, glory favor. Yeah, you do. Before we get there, however, let's deal with the secondary mission first and then deal with all the rewards. And Damn! So. so so broken arrow is a supply supply mission and uh, yep. who is going marshall yeah i'm glad you asked that question uh, yeah oh goodness <laughs> i bet 
was also a supply mission. Uh, I'm going to send Ray Standing Cliff. Just because we have a. And I'm going to send with him the uh, Silver Stags. Okay. You did say you were planning to send the officer as well. I don't know if that's still the case. No, I'm, I'm, I've changed my mind with him because the medic is currently healing and if we get a religious mission, we need the officer. Okay, cool. So I just want to have that in just in case. Planning for the future. Yeah. Good job, Marshall. Okay, so um, everyone's a legionnaire. However, mm, mm, mm -hmm. so um, there is one dice because we have everyone as a legionnaire. However, we have zero dice because the pressure is over two. So we're currently at zero dice, and then we can up that by spending food or intel or both. Can you spend one food? And I'll, I'll spend, spend one. one food. I'll spend one in tub. Okay. Two dice. Two dice. Two dice. And this is like a whole new ball game. It's it's almost like you have shit now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Use it. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, dice. <coughs> it's a <coughs> double three. Oh god. <laughs> Angry oh. dice. Yeah. That's so... that's, that's a fail. So let me tell you what that means, because you sent the silver stags. Yeah. According to what I can see, that we whole die? squad died. Yeah. There's no silver stags now. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's only three of them, and three yeah. of them Did will die. Did you just get Grey Standing Cliff killed? No. That, no. Grey nope. Standing Cliff will have a level three harm. <laughs> Not dead though. <laughs> this is like this is the, the, I am the danger to this game. I am the, I am so the treasure. The silver stags all die. Minus three morale. Oh god. Grey standing cliff takes level three harm. We don't have anything to boost morale at the moment, so it's. You do have the free action from uh, the Lady of Meyer, which you could use for boosting up your morale, yeah, so that you can have I your own I actions. Have to. <laughs> she can have a banquet for you. So we're currently on one morale, guys. Just letting you know. <laughs> That was rough. It could be worse. Okay, so if we um, if we use the the extra action to boost morale, then what will that take us up to? Let's see. The quartermaster. So if you're using that for liberty, hmm, every character, if we like standard liberty, is every character clears up to three stress and legion morale improves by uh, two. And then we need more than that. We, then, we need... if we boost it uh, with the use of a supply, uh, we can clear all stress from legionnaires, uh, can not trauma though. Use a supply to but boost. clear all stress and restore four morale. Yeah, because that one. four morale would give us yeah, an action because yeah. it would put us on. Okay, uh, so we, we've boosted it. Yeah. So all the characters clear all the stress. Yeah. Is that right? Everyone clears all stress. Oh, so, so on five morale. Sweet. Okay, yeah. everyone clears their stress. Holy guacamole! Yeah, that, that was all. You could do with a button for that. I'm that, seeing that was a feisty like, I, I'm, banquet. I'm gonna go through them all. I'll, I'll sort that out in a second. A banquet yeah. worthy of some yeti legend. Yeah. Uh, so a memorial uh, banquet. <laughs> the, yeah, the Lady von Meyer. Really, you've you've not had things like this since the last time yeah. you were in the Eastern Kingdoms. Like home. <laughs> oh my god, is that a quail's egg? <laughs> it's, a, yeah. it's a ripe banana. Okay. So you, you're you're fine dining at the Lady Von Meyer's uh, estate here in Westlake. You're treated like uh, nobility and uh, probably looked down by a lot of people. And um, I think it's a place where like there's other people invited as well, like other luminaries, uh, locals. And the Lady Von Meyer, you, you witness her, like, the entire evening, just, like, ripping into people who are like, Mmm, mmm, these Easterners, mmm, unclean. At this table, hmm, what have we come to? 
and the Lady Von Meyer is just like savaging these people. And uh, you can just see the sort of social hierarchy just being decimated by <laughs> the Lady Von Meyer. She is not taking any shit uh, because she is, uh, you've come to learn out, she is super serious about her sort of religious convictions and she will brook absolutely no shit from anyone. So all you, you witnessed a lot of like social lynching going on <laughs> in here. Um, on account of defending you guys uh, from the local sort of snooty nobles. Uh, right. So, with that being said, let's deal with the rewards of your mission. So, we have yeah, I'm broken. Just, I'm just doing the leveling up of my, uh, my dude. So, yeah, uh, I was gonna go for Broken Arrow, but we fucking tanked that. So, uh, what, what, Crimson... what, sorry, can I just ask what was the highest threat of the person we faced? I'm too uh, off. Two. Level. Oh sweet, that means I can get extra ability for them. Yeah. Uh, the Shadow Witcher are too. Um, so what do you reckon guys? Do you reckon it's worth taking another, my final level of Survivor to get an extra drama for the for King? Yeah. Fishing? We need, we yeah. need to keep Boom. this guy. He's, he's got three trauma ready to go. Yeah, I think staying power is a, is a fine investment. So we get two supply and one box i.e. three uses of religious supplies from Lady Von Meyer. Yeah. The, the quartermaster's already noted them down. Okay, good. Alright, so then we have one downtime action. Uh, oh, and then what about the, want... sorry, um, what about the, the, the glory favour? Oh yeah, so let's see... <laughs> Our chosen <laughs> ding! So, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I've put it up now for you. So, we've filled out Zora's uh, f mission favor, and um, you guys are now free to select um, one additional ability. And if I'm not entirely mistaken, <coughs> either you or I get to pick or have to pick another feature as as oh her my power God, goes more intense. Good. I would probably suggest we take that living god's kiss, where if you rest and recuperate, each legionnaire removes two corruption in addition to healing. Because, like, that's the only way to get rid of corruption, I believe. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Get oh, rid of corruption. Uh, Bonus. It's living God's fury, though, John. I'll oh, spend religious supplies. Yeah, but we don't tend to have a lot of religious supplies. No, but it gives us... It gives us... It we gives have us, got some at the moment. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, We'd only be able to use that ability on the occasion we have religious supplies. Yeah, true. Whereas the um, the living god's kiss means we can continually, as long as we spend time healing, we can always be knocking that corruption down, and we get corruption like a lot, and we're going to get it more as more and dead turn up. Oh god, they're so good. <laughs> what the ball? Alternatively, we could just go like hardcore and take the um, blood of fire when you spend religious supplies. All legionnaires mm -hmm. automatically get yeah. fire oil. <laughs> oh, the the equip reliquaries and black shot for your religious supplies. That's actually really useful. Yeah, yeah there's a As lot of As is the uh, All right. automatically getting fire. Oil. Well, I'd suggest we either go for Living God's Fury or we go for Living God's Kiss. So it's either do we want to heal corruption or do we want to get like that black shot and running Heal crits. corruption. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like Living God's Kiss, it is there. It's, 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 the, it's the. In the long run, that's a lot better. Now, the thing I'm going to ask is would we be able to get that before our people had healed so we can knock down corruption this time or. <laughs> yes, yes, because it's a downtime action, and we yep. we do that afterwards. Sweet. So, so please let me know. Um, no, no corruption for the kingfisher, and you can take your corruption. Tell me up. about Zora, your chosen. Uh, how does this work? How does her power remove corruption? Alternatively, how does she remove your corruption? So I'm just throwing out a suggestion, guys, but I'm imagining it because it's called living god's kiss mm -hmm. i'm imagining it's actually quite a painful sort of experience like she literally like 
Burns you, away. Living, living flame, whatever. She like kisses you on the forehead, and that burns the corruption out of you. So although it doesn't physically harm you, it's quite painful. Mm -hmm. It's like a sort of religious and cleansing. It's a little scar in the shape of a proper like Valentine's Day kiss on your forehead. Yeah, and then everyone starts to look like they have three eyes because <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. So it's sort of like the kiss on the forehead like burns in the soul and then like you're just left like on the ground just weeping because it hurts so much is it too is it too corruption yeah because yeah. we did boost it didn't we so i don't know if that makes a difference is it just the uh no not to this no, you, you can't yeah. use food T to, to be fair both kingfisher and vanilla are now corruption freaks when you got to yeah. okay uh, so that was fantastic. Uh, that ability is muy bueno, and uh, we're going to clear the mission favor. And uh, I, I was looking up, like, do we get more features on this? Mm. Unfortunately, my guy did not become a soldier, but he's close. So I'll so take, take him out on another mission. Vermilion filled up two clocks, one for special abilities, and I've taken nice. the loaded for bear ability so he can carry more explosives. Nice. <laughs> and uh, he filled up his prowess clock as well. Now, can I take a level four ability on this soldier no. at this point? I didn't think so, so I've dropped it in skirmish because he can't buy up his wreck or his shoot any further. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. Yeah, Vermilion is shaping up to be a, a star, I think, mm -hmm. in the Legion. Especially now with, like, what do you have in your backpack? This is like, things that go boom. <laughs> this is my boomstick. <laughs> uh, and God. so is this, and this, <laughs> and this, and this. <laughs> All of these are my boomsticks. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm just nice. going through did you remove your stress? You did, yeah, cool. Alright, so, uh, we have... One, one action to take, isn't one it? One action to do, and then if you want to, you can buy more with your supplies, but for the moment... Don't we get the, uh, okay. the automatic one as well with the laborers? Yes, uh, you have both. What do you have your laborers um, build? Oh, right. They so they now could we've build got the anything boats. you can build. <laughs> but. Okay. Um, well, uh, siege weapons sounds good. What's the next, next, next time I've taken a building? Which list, list, bring forth the treble. I and that's mean, a, that's a real. Yeah. Like if if you went to Stone Orchard and you're like, we will bring the catapults, <laughs> it would have gone differently. <laughs> Bombarded from a mile away. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, the siege, mm -hmm. sorry, the supply carts. Yeah. We need at least one horse for each cart, right? And we've only got one horse at the minute. Also, we're about to go on a load of boats. So we don't need the supply carts because we'll have the boats. I think, I think it's Until like ration of horses, so it's side. like you have multiple. But yeah, however it works with the horses, we're, we're still yeah, not got horses. enough to make it worthwhile building supply carts. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing on the list is siege weapons. Go for siege weapons. You could also just make some shit or, up like, yeah, if you have any ideas. Yeah, make some shit up. Yeah. Um, um. But to be honest, aside from barricades or more weapons, I mean, have we got anyone that's skilled enough to make us firearms? Mm. So what I would say to that is you you have all the firearms you want uh, by default. You have enough. But <laughs> if, if you want something specific, um, sort of, I guess, like project oriented, like something special outside the, the norm. Uh. Basically, I want something that I can equip the heavies with so that they can use black shot at range without having to borrow someone else's gun. Although, every time. Although, if we build a big catapult, imagine what the millions of like, um, explosives would be like with fire. Indeed, that, that's another thing that I was thinking about. 
Well, like we get a load of oil, and, like make a, make some big bundles of hay, and like send the yeah. flame in, uh-huh. like balls over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be sweet. I do enjoy the idea of siege weapons. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. siege weapons, it is. Boom. Okay, we're gonna set up a new, and I'm gonna say, because um, I, I did some thinking on it, um, because of the way recruit works, the action, mm-hmm. you do it, and then you just get five rookies. Now, we have one clock, uh, which was sort of inspired by the very first clock that mm-hmm. you got from the Western Front, mm-hmm. which is you re- you get five recruits, but it takes six segments. And I figured that's, that doesn't add up at all because you could just spend one action yeah. and add one segment instead of spending one action and just getting five recruits. So I'm going to say um, we're going to do away with that whole clock and you can by now you've trained those guys so you can just oh, have brilliant. five aldermani recruits and for the marshal that means germanic name and we're, we're going to talk about their traits as well put, okay. put, put them in the new yeah. unit das star vipers <laughs> das stags <laughs> so oh, that goes I'm, away. I'm probably going to reform the silver stags yeah and then we're going to Let's see what we... Well, look on the bright side, Marshall. You haven't got to worry about them conflicting with any of the existing members. Yeah. No survivors, no trauma. No. I think I've gone through and cleared the stress boxes of everyone. How are we, look- <coughs> how are we looking for supplies? But if what you... Because um... we've still got an action, so we mm-hmm. could get some supplies with that action. Mm-hmm. So... If that's just hang on, hang on. We we've not finished getting the clock up for the siege weapons yet. But... Yeah, I think because <laughs> siege My weapons are to... siege weapons are fine quality, so they are a little bit more on the on the the hard side. So there's basically three tiers. Uh, there's your standard stuff, which is black shot, food, horses, religious supplies, and yeah. then there's uh, fine quality, which is uh, laborers siege weapons and if you wanted some alchemical shit going on then that would be fine as well and then exceptional which is the very top tier which is very rare uh, alchemists and mercies uh, which you can find in the wild so if you wanted alchemists or mercies uh, i would suggest you look for them in west or east lake because that's where the people are um, so this is the sort of mid mid tier so i'm gonna say it's gonna be a six segment thing and okay. we're going to add uh, let's just I'm, I'm going to add another one because I uh, yeah as a sort of uh, recompense for the because uh, I, I just feel like th- that was a bit of a dumb thing that I had in mind for those older money guys so well, don't worry about it re- we're all getting reuse. used to the yeah, system we're, we're, we're all learning as we go yeah. along so. yeah. uh, it just hit me out of the blue like, if wait you'd a minute, actually given us <laughs> the six segment clock and it had just automatically ticked off one each session to represent mm-hmm. yeah. their training it would be about now that it come up yeah yeah so, yeah that's, and that's, that's probably the way i would have said yeah. to do it now knowing how the system yeah. works yeah. yeah so i'm gonna say building siege weapon <laughs> which mm-hmm. is a cool yeah. thing to say Boy. so we have two out of four on building a siege weapon <laughs> Grand. So now we can cross the lake if we want to. Yeah, you uh-huh. have boats. Uh, but before we get to that, we have the one action which we can use. Yeah. So do we want to gather supplies or recruit mo men? We've also got a few injuries across the board. A couple of, a couple of guys are out of action at the moment. But it not as it wasn't as bad as it has been. Can I suggest next time make sure you put the medic on the main mission? Uh, and then we can use him for healing afterwards. The medic's banged up. Medic's laid up. Right, okay, how do we get the medic healed up? We'd have to use a campaign action to heal, but then we wouldn't be able to get supplies or anything. Right, like okay. Spend a supply to go and buy supplies. Yeah, so we, we, can... could, we could spend the supplies yeah. so we have two actions, use one for supply, one for healing. Mm-hmm. He's got, he's got a lot of three hammer. That back on one supply. Yeah, but we'd be we've... using one action to get more supplies. Okay. Spend money to make money. Yeah, speculate to accumulate. So yeah, one for healing. <laughs> There's no futures here to speculate on. <laughs> it's the healing one. 
Okay, so rest and recuperation. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, each so each legionnaire marks a tick in any harm row. Once the rows ticks are full, erase the injuries on that row. It's, unfortunately, it still wouldn't uh, heal the medic because the medics are full level three harm at the moment. Yeah, well, it's one tick each to him and yeah. uh, Grey Standing yeah, Cliff and anyone else who's mm -hmm. I'll go injured. It's all, it's all we can spare at the minute. That's right. Yeah, which is it's all good. It's, it's it might be one tick, but it's all it's all necessary. <laughs> uh huh. In the long run. And then the Spot. other one. Is yeah, the you... supply roll? Yeah. Do you have to? Do, does somebody need to lead the supply roll? Because I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which that I think that's probably what we want to do. So if you deduct one supply, which you have done, I see. So mm -hmm. then we're going to be in acquire assets. Now. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh no! Sorry, sorry. I brain farted. You, you can't get supply, uh, with acquire assets because assets is a is a thing that doesn't include supplies itself. So, um, yeah. Sorry, that was entirely labor siege rifle. A, a yeah, brain fart that's true. On my part. Uh, so can we use that to get black shot? Yes, you you can get black shot with acquire assets for oh, sure. Oh, I could recruit. Or, or food, or, or horses. Uh, Westlake is a place where you have three dice to roll, and mm -hmm. it's a big city, so almost anything, and really anything, is on the table. So whatever you wanted, you could try and go get. Food or horses would be good. Do I have to? Is it just one thing specifically? Yeah, one, one thing at a time. You could use it twice, uh, but for different things. Final decision, Joe's quartermaster. Uh, right, we have two food, one horse, two black shot, three religious and supplies. Shattered lions, I haven't used the shattered lions yet. We're gonna go for the black shot. Okay. It's getting scary out there. Yeah. Let's black do shot the really roll. helps. Sorry? Black shot really helps. Uh, it does. Even the scales. Especially against the blighters' forces, because with those you're almost so, you're always down by one, uh, almost doing jack shit to them. So, so I'm rolling the location, which is three dice. Yeah, yeah, three dice. And if you send the officer, which we will, Baron. <laughs> yeah, we can we can upgrade the result by one. So you can. He, right, he can so bring I still in... roll three dice, but he yeah. gives me an extra. Yeah, he he just brings in more. <laughs> <laughs> More stuff. Five. Five. So five is standard. Okay. So, so if well, it upgrades, well, with it that, becomes fine, doesn't it? Yeah, it becomes fine because cool. of the the lads yes. that we sent out. So the the Baron, uh, wheeling and dealing like he does, um, I think manages to secure you uh, two boxes of black shot. For, nice. for you. Grand. I, I like that I've still not sent him on a mission yet, like a, a primary mission. Hey, to, to be fair, man, he's putting the work in in the he background. He is putting the work in. He is making. He, 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 he might not be out there on the field of battle, but when we like need someone to like get us a good deal with the merchants, mm -hmm. he's the he's the yeah. man. He is mm -hmm. the man. Yeah, he's been putting in a lot of. Effort. I'll say he's if he does nothing else in any mission, he's more than earned his keep. Yeah. <laughs> and. Let us not forget, wasn't it he who... No, did he go out and bring in the Kingfisher? Was it someone else? No. Yeah, no, he did. He led the he mission. He did go yeah. and bring in yeah. the Kingfisher. So yeah. he is responsible for the Kingfisher and a lot of our stuff. <laughs> yeah. He got, he got... He keeps getting injured, though, because I sent him on the mission. He's always, like, yeah. banged up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to send him out one day. I, I was starting to wonder whether he's, like, deliberately injures himself when he's like... Oh no, I just have to I'm stay at home and deal yeah. with these merchants. Uh, yeah, I'd mm -hmm. love to go on that mission, but uh, oh, my legs playing up a bit. Well, oh, I really, yeah. I'd really like to, but I can't. Oh, my chill blades. Yeah, sprained my ankle. Okay. Uh, Excellent. We are probably done with that, and then. Do you want to talk about what sort of missions we want to aim for? Um, just. Okay. So, oh yeah, so back at camp, we had a back at camp scene. Uh, which I forgot entirely, so let me just quickly revisit uh, what that was like. 
Mm. As most of us are sort of kneeling before like Zora being like <laughs> As we have the corruption burnt out of us. So So, remind me, Marshall, what was the morale when we came back in? Uh, at the initially, before we had the rest and recuperation, Yes. Uh, it was... One. Okay. And this is... Uh, something that is starting to have a little bit of an effect. Uh, because we're down to the lowest bracket of morale here. Uh, let me just quickly take a look at who... Does our, has our morale gone back up now we've gained some more dudes? Or? Uh, it has not. Okay. It only goes up for me from rewards for missions and from campaign actions so far I've seen. So, I was just quickly having a look. Okay. So... When we come back to camp, uh, the ghost owls. Were the ghost owls on the Crimson Tiger mission? No, it was the Silver Stags were on the. Silver Stags. Well, on the bro Broken Arrow mission. The one that's no, just... I mean the the one where we went to see the Crimson Tiger, the Weapon Master. Mm -hmm. uh, Crimson Tiger, I sent the ghost owls, yeah. Yeah. So the ghost owls, while you were there, uh, you did a whole bunch of foraging. Uh, they fell ill. Uh, the ghost owls out of action for uh, a little while now. So they're all sick. Oh. From something they ate, probably. So we have uh, a squad down. They're feeling very ill. So at least yeah. we've got our all new rookie squad. Yeah. So. Uh... For the next, the ne until told otherwise, I can't yeah, use yeah. them in a mission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ghost owls will be laid down uh, until further notice. From not being able to stand up. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Oh dear, dear. So that was that was what we came back to. Uh, a sick tent. Okay. Uh, but uh, good news, it was the regular kind because Zora couldn't burn it out. So it's not corruption. Yeah, it's, good. it's not. It's not the taint. It's it's uh, actual uh, just disease. Um, okay. What I've learned from playing this game, as the marshal, you have to make a lot of names. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have had a lot of shit as roles for the secondary missions. We go through people <laughs> like butter. <laughs> so, uh, Commander, the time passes. Add one pressure and one time. Okay. And Quartermaster, one food is consumed. Sorry? Uh, one food is consumed. Okay. Oh, we're getting a bit too close to that second uh, thing being filled. <laughs> one more, one more, and it's gone. We so, really need a mission to get some time back, guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, now, the question is, Commander, do we advance from Westlake? What do you reckon, guys? Because pretty much if we advance, that second clock is full. No matter what I roll, it's full. Because I'm going to get at least one. But if we stay, is there, is there much chance we can get it down? That's the question. It, it, it's a small chance. It depends it's, on what kind of missions come yeah. up. It's only if a mission pops up that's like, hey, have some time back. Which if hasn't third, happened a lot so far. If the third clock fills... It's over. Game over, It's, man. it's over. over. Oh. Oh, well, well, that's a... Oh, I didn't realise we were that far from it. I thought we were, like, a couple of ticks away. Uh. Yeah, it's been, so... it's been a rough time with the clocks. We've had two shit rolls. Like, the worst rolls. So there you go, Quartermaster. You're not the only one making rubbish rolls. 
So do we move to East Lake? What rubbish roles have I made today? I was talking about myself. Then why did you say quartermaster? Because because I saw you on the screen and you said quartermaster. <laughs> I meant okay. I meant to say marshal. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've got I've got military campaign stuff going on. I don't know. Blaming I can't, Matthew's I, crappy roles on me. I can't keep I can't keep track of all these different positions. I'm I'm trying to plan out the big strategy. You so, think so, about the big picture. So, so basically, look, if we if we sort of balls to the wall it and went straight for Sky Dagger Keep, we are four locations away from Sky Dagger. <clears throat> so now we've got to make the decision: Do we head across to East Lake and just like make for Sky Dagger? whilst we've still got one full clock remaining or do we stay here if we go right now we're going to be very hungry on that journey well next we'll have to go, we'll go to east lake and then we can resupply there okay. yeah, east lake is, uh, east lake is the city. as good as west lake okay easy to find food in east Fair lake play. no problem and we can flog these boats there and trade them for something else yeah in which case we're going to yeah we're going to advance to east lake unless uh, unless the the marshal has any objections <laughs> but this place has been good to us. Um, from yeah, what I said the, last the time, the King's rolling up the map. We can't yeah, stay here forever. We we're not safe here. This is a temporary reprieve. Indeed. We've managed to heal some wounds. We've gained some experience. We've learnt some things about our enemy. But we can't dally here too long. I I think we should advance. But I think from here on out, it's going to be a very difficult, even even more so than it has been. Prepare the boats, men. We make for East Lake at first light. Yeah, you hear probably one of the soldiers who was sort of in attendance, like an attendant, oh, shit. like steps out of the, the command tent and is like, You heard the commander. Get the boats to the water. And then there's uh, all sorts of uh, commotion outside. And in the distance, you hear someone being like, I know, I know, and there's a ghost owl being like, I can step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll hang them over the sides of the boats as we're traveling. Yeah, it's <laughs> just like bumpers. <laughs> okay, so we advance to East Lake. Okay. Anyone then... want to buy a boat? <laughs> boat. Excuse me, Gav. No want to buy a boat. Fresh boats, <laughs> lightly used. Um, okay, so yeah, we can definitely sort something out as you get to the next campaign action phase for like what to do with the boats. Um, okay, so I'll do the the reading for East Lake, and then uh, we uh, well, I, I guess it's like first let's discuss, Commander. What type of mission do you prefer? Everything's on the table: assault, recon, religious supply. I'm going to suggest supply. What do you think, Quartermaster? Yeah, supply or recon. Supply. Okay. I will remind you that time is most likely to come up in the salt missions, if that's a right. factor at all. I still think we need to resupply first. We can stay here for an extra turn if we need to. Like we did it in okay. West Lake. Yeah, supply. Okay, yeah, we've got, supply. To see. we've got to see what you're all for your move. Yeah. It's going to be dank, whatever it is. Oh, by the way, uh, we. Hmm. How does the advancement thing work on the commander sheet? Let me look that up. Uh, pressure, okay. And okay. roll pressure minus horses. Yeah. So as we move. Uh, do we want to spend our last horses on reducing the pressure from six to five? <laughs> it sounds like we do. Poor old Neddy. I really don't think it's going to help when I'm rolling five dice, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I I guess because it's going to take... It's, it works with the same logic, so... Are you going to let me keep my last pony? If you want to keep it, I'm not going to begrudge you. Because <laughs> it is Cause... useful in... Keep, keep, it, keep it then and I'll just roll six dice. It's probably not going to yeah. make much difference. So you're rolling six dice and taking the highest result? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And, I, and, I want, and I want to get low. <laughs> Ideally, I want oh, six God. ones. Okay, here we go then. So yeah, Here we go. It's just a roll. Oh, I just click on pressure. There we go. Bonus dice, none. Five. Five. Okay, the five is, is not, not awful. It's just two. So the, sec we... the second one's still full and we've got one on the third. Yeah, so... 
the fall deepens, we move towards winter, and Panya burns. So, so the, the great forest oh. of Panya is in flames. God. Because the Cinder King has arrived there. And we've, we've got nine segments left on the last clock. And we've got like another three locations to go. If just, we just, just like pause it straight to Sky. Mm -hmm. Like, if we make them, if we like move from the last location to Sky Gagger, mm -hmm. and that is the one that fills the clock, do we still lose? Does it have to, we have to have one remaining. Yes, because there's stuff to do at Sky Dagger Keep. Okay. And if you don't have time, then you don't get to do those. So. Okay. The, so then that will, the final battle will be, I guess, at Sky Dagger Keep with you, your pants down. <laughs> so technically, John, we have four still to go because we have to get there and do something. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's uh. uh, uh however, now we. I'm been... amazed we made it to East Lake, to be honest. Yeah, that's that's true. legit. <laughs> yeah, we Kingfish have MVP. two crits. <laughs> Two crits on the time rolls, which adds five goddamn ticks. However, the pressure has now reset to zero. So. Yeah, it has. So that's the good thing about it. Now, if if you have a lot of horses and you spend just a little bit of time, maybe like one or two um, rounds, I guess, in locations, your pressure will be manageable just by spending horses. So if you load it up on horses in East Lake, like let's say six horses. You might just make it without any time added, uh, mm -hmm. but Sounds that like requires horses, of course, <laughs> a lot of horses. But we know a guy who gets deals, so. I wonder if he wants to buy a boat. <laughs> yeah, both both for horses. <laughs> well, make some wooden horses. Yeah, <laughs> then he could trick the Cinder King. <laughs> Hide inside. Uh, okay. No, so... no, we'll stuff them with explosives. East Lake. Mm, and fire yeah. out the siege weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Horse cannibal. Okay, so Panya is burning. That's that's the thing that happens. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Where be my notes? Okay, so this is the this is the bit for East Lake that we have arrived, and then we're gonna end. <clears throat> East Lake is a city that defines itself by its rivalry with West Lake. Whereas West Lakers show devotion through building churches, East Lakers consider themselves more devout. Their council is all anointed church folk and their mayor a deacon, which assures them that they are far less corrupt and prone to graft. Where West Lakers channel trade from the coast, East Lakers pride themselves on trade with the Eastern Kingdoms, where you are from. Uh, the resounding bells that tell the time and raise alarms to the whole city are gifts from the nation of Or, um, who was allowed to build a temple to the Maker, which is an Orite god, uh, in the town after promising such a wonder to the city. Though Eastlake is seen as more refined and cosmopolitan, there is still an air of haughtiness. They are at their heart consumers, appreciating what others offer, but only from the stance of their own superiority. So far, the war has left East Lake relatively untouched, but a pall hangs over the city. Fires can be seen from across the lake to the west. Rumors of undead pushing hard across the northern plains only compound the fact that refugees have ceased to stream in from the south and east. We know why. The few words that come from the east say that a powerful undead force is at the border of Pania, burning the mythical forest as it advances. We know this to be true now. <laughs> For sure, uh, for now, uh, the citizens of Westlake remain paralyzed, caught between a horde on either side, but so far untouched by the undead. There's a considerable debate about how to handle the situation, with some advocating for escape to the north, some arguing for a military response, and the majority wanting to wait, see, and trust in the gods. Nice. That is no, the end. you morons go north. <laughs> that is. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they'll be at least slightly. Don't stay and fight them. Hopefully, if they're religious, they'll be at least slightly Just well disposed. Get the fuck like, out the way. Living God. Yeah, and they will. They are also cosmopolitan. Whereas, folks in Westlake don't think much about your Zemiati chosen. These people will. <laughs> so. Yeah. So yeah. we we, I think we do we do like a turn a campaign turn of resupplying in East Lake. 
assess what we've got in terms of resources, then we decide whether we want to stay another turn or move on to Fort Calisco. Yep. And uh, Eastlake has uh, assets rating three as well, like Westlake did, so good place to get supplies. Now, there's um, special rules here as well. Um, Eastlake is cosmopolitan and untouched by war. Mercy's alchemists and siege weapons are a standard quality in this town. So if you want to go all out on buying stuff, you can get everything here on the cheap. So nice. By on the cheap, I mean you can access them with regular ass rolls. So yeah, so oh. that's that's where we are. And Excellent. I'll get the, get the missions rolled up for next time. And your Excited. choice was supply missions? Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, good. We'll see how that goes. So that was it. Thank you for playing. Thank you very much Ooh. for running it. Very much Thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you very much, mate. Okay, I'll end the recording here.